Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. This is the first, no one's ever thought of this before, the first panel show on the entirety of the internet that actually has interaction. You get to decide, well, you get to decide who, what, what we talk about at That's home. True. It's a choose your own adventure, all right? So all of you watching right now, what do you want us to talk about? Uh, pogs, uh, Pokemon cards, the defective pogs? flashlights, whatever it is, you choose. Pogs? You get to, you get to pick. <laughs> wow, that's a throwback. I'm, I'm dating myself by knowing what that is. I mean, I'm down for it. Um, and then, yeah, let me throw, at least in my chats, um, the link <laughs> to, oh, yeah, to I this because I, I realize no one can submit anything if, um, if I don't put that in there. So let me drop that in and feel free to fill it up with questions. Um, I, I, I love everyone who submitted questions last time, but I assure you I will not be taking personal questions about me. So if you put those in there. Um, they're not going to get answered, so please. I, I'll take personal point. questions if they're spicy. You'll take, you'll take personal? Okay. I'll take personal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will okay. too. I yeah. That. I'll take personal some. Personal questions, <laughs> I will not. <laughs> oh, so, right, listen, I love it. Be in, come on, be in my business to my face. You can <laughs> have to read this shit. <laughs> it's fine. I'll read it. <laughs> I mean, there's limits to what I'll answer, but I'll take basically every single question. I have All no right. shame. Y'all heard it. Gates <laughs> open. Come on in. I feel no. like we're inviting it, though, now. <laughs> You well, are? Let, me, let me start this episode by saying last episode I was not saying beats children. That is not what I was saying. I am not a proponent of child abuse. I was just a general proponent of general violence. I was saying that when you're young, you should get your ass beat talking shit by other young people <laughs> like had those experience. So I just I just want to be in trouble for the right thing. General promotion of violence, anti-child abuse. I just want to declare that up. So all the people that were like, oh my God, you're yeah, I I agree with you. Child abuse is fucked up. That was not what I was saying. I will communicate my general love of violence better in the future. Just thought I should tell you. Are there any other controversies that we should address? Because I don't know if there are any others, but I didn't know that that was a thing, but I'm glad that you cleared yeah. that up. My friend told me, like, right at the end of the episode, he was like, oh, he was like, they were so mad. They thought you were... I was like, oh, no, that's oh, not what shit. I was saying. And then one of my followers uh, uh, told me on Instagram, and immediately I was like, no, ma'am, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Child abuse is fucked up. Don't be... I, 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 I actually... I am not a proponent of beating children. I don't. I, I, I know my people usually are, but I, my myself, I'm not a fan, and I just wanted to clear that up. Like, just you know, want to be in trouble so, for the right things. I was gonna say we could we could use our powers of uncancellation to uncancel you. There you mm -hmm. go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Boom. Saved you. Evening. <laughs> I feel like there's gonna come a point where something that we say is going to be deliberately misconstrued because it's happened to all of us, but we just have to like get under the skin of certain people. And then they'll like take a clip, they'll boost it. I feel like soon it's gonna happen. It hasn't happened to us yet, just positive things. Someone said when I did the when we did the midterm stream elections, do y'all remember when y'all brought up um, Beto O'Rourke for a second, one of the polls that had it wrong or something, or we thought you read it that he was mm. ahead. And mm. I was like, oh, what? Somehow that, that right there, someone was on Twitter like, and she's a real Beto O'Rourke fan, and we should have known since she fans Beto O'Rourke. I was like, me stand Beto O'Rourke? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
I would barely recognize Beto O'Rourke if he knocked on my fucking door. Please don't lie on my name. I was I was merely curious. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, People will take you out of context. Team. They'll say, take certain clips. They, this happens. Yeah, I mean, YouTube comments. I read. I'll read things in my comments where it's like, "You should talk about this." And in literally in that video, I uh, talked about that, and they didn't watch the video. Yeah, <laughs> so yes. this is just. That's People are the gonna be literal worst. When it's like Mike didn't even bring up this. It's like, well, you didn't get to minute nine, motherfucker. Keep watching, <laughs> and I address all of your points. I'm not gonna do a video and just like half-ass it. Like, check my sources, check what I say. That's the most mm -hmm. frustrating thing. I, I would rather them like misattribute a policy position to me than say that I didn't say something when I clearly did say something, or vice versa. I, I just I hate people like that, and it's so common now. It's so common. Uh, but I guess it's par for the course when you're on on the internet. I don't know. That is the way of the internet, unfortunately, because people want, you know, to a degree, things to be taken out of context because people love drama and gossip and all of that. And if there's a way to stir something up, people will do it. And why? Because it brings in views. Like at the end True. of the day, that's what it is. Should we give them what they want and just say a bunch of out of context things that no. they could say no. is bad? No. Nope. <laughs> not to raise my one good blood pressure, like not not me. Listen, I can't I can't do it because the minute they say an internet, this is my head fucking spinning on Twitter they to, to fight everybody and their mama. No, sir. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I'll do it. Let me let me just give them what they want. Okay, mute. A couple of out of context. Okay, I'm glad he's dead. She deserved that. Okay, do what you will with that, folks. <laughs> 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 right, let, let us get into it this evening shall we um so our first question i know is going to be about the donald trump cards we're going to wait on that till matt gets in if i'm correct if that's what we're doing yeah. tonight okay. yeah crypto enthusiast okay cool beans so then we'll hold off on that for right now so hold those questions on donald trump i promise we will address them later um let's see here so oh man all right so questions are already coming in um Okay, this is about, I think, another streamer. Um, do we want to talk about other kind of people in our spaces or not? Oh, so you just let's it's going question. straight up with drama. It's, it's, we it's can hear the question and Well, it depends who it is. Yeah. So we can, let's, let's court it. Like, hear the question if it's about other people. Like, it, whenever it's about another person and it might, whatever that we might know, let's vote on it. Okay, and the that's majority. fair. Yeah, okay, that's fair. So the question here comes from Winston, and they ask, Thoughts on Destiny going on PragerU? Do we yeah, want to don't question? know who either one of the motherfucking people are? <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that he was on PragerU. I, I, I know everyone involved. Uh, I, I don't. I haven't seen it, so I don't. I can't okay. really comment. I, I don't mm. know if he's done a video, if he's been interviewed, if he's debating someone from PragerU. I have no idea. Okay. I just got to give shout out to Winston. Winston is always in my chat, always bringing the drama up. This is what he does. <laughs> oh, I, I love know. Winston. He's, he's one of my mods. He's one of my mods, <laughs> oh, too. <there> <laughs> yeah, right. He's, okay. He spends half he's always on it. Trying to stir drama for content. Shout out to Winston. <laughs> I don't follow <laughs> Destiny at all, so I don't even, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not, either, I'm not so. qualified either. I, I think it, they're a streamer. Oh, I know who Destiny yeah, yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I've battled I'm with familiar. Destiny quite a bit. I know who they are, but I don't follow them. Yes, I, 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 like, I know Prager U is a YouTube channel, and I know uh, it's a, it's a it's that a works. very conservative YouTube channel that peddles yeah. misinformation and tons of fucking horrible shit. But again, just in in good faith, I don't know. Like, I I would be surprised to find out that he's done a Prager U Prager U video, the ones where you actually right. stand in front of the green screen and then you're like, here's why the woke mind virus is going to kill us all. I I'm going to assume it's probably he went on someone's show on Prager U to debate them or something. I don't know. That's, yeah, that's what I would guess. It's about too. as good faith as good faith as I can be. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, this one specifically is for Olay. This one's for you. Oh, okay. Questions. So, uh, Olay, like it or not, we have a prison issue. How do we simultaneously end incarceration and protect from the truly dangerous? This question comes from Roller Dragon. Um, I think the first thing you need to recognize is that the current system isn't there to protect from the truly dangerous or the dangerous at all. I think that I think we have to like not work from that misconception because 
you know, the question purports to believe that that's what our system is doing now. And the system has no, like, no concern at all for danger, safety, or any of that. It's a profit system that's just based on incarcerated and using, you know, black and brown bodies for certain things. And that's just a reality. It's not, we are okay, all these different atrocities and things we ask about only when concerning that question is only now coming up in the safety element once we are talking about poor and black and brown people that are already being criminalized. But we have no concern for who walks amongst us by the rich or the white or the whatever. We know of all kind of far crazy things and they just proceed to exist among us. So I think that's the first thing we have to recognize is if we want. And then I think the second thing I would work from is the majority of crime and what we think of as crime in our society is just not violent crime. That's just not true. Violent crime or people that are just like deranged or what we sensationalize it to be in media. That's not the case. What the majority of things are in our system, there are root causes that we as a society can address to avoid those things. Um, and so I would say the first thing we want to do is if we want to in any inquiry, and I think this is a mistake sometimes um, our side of the aisle does, is we will, when we talk about crimes of poverty, we talk about that, we always want to exclude. We're like, oh, nonviolent, but no, only nonviolence, not violence. You know what I mean? We, we associate crimes of poverty to only be what we directly think of as with wealth. Like, oh, you stole some food, you stole some this. But violence is a product of poverty in your environment and all these different things and all these different responses. And in any event, Violence, at the end of the day, condemning violence doesn't stop it from reoccurring. That's what you need. That's what we need to understand. You can condemn, condemn violence all you want till you're blue in the face, but you have to contend with it and where it comes from in order to deal with it. So I would say if we want to have a system that deals with the truly violent among us, first of all, we have to recognize that we don't have such a system as it stands. And we are starting from scratch. And that and that analysis would have to begin with, well, where is this violence coming from? Why are these people committing this? And how do we address that? So that would be my, that'd be my answer. Can, can I just ask, it, when you said that, you know, people on this side of the aisle are like a little scared to mention violent crimes and stuff like that, do you think that is because they're trying to win people over? Because it's I, like the argument being, if I'm talking to someone, I'm like, we should release all nonviolent drug offenders from prison. They'd probably be like, yeah, okay. You know, yeah. but if I was like, and also some of them within certain conditions based on the violence they've perpetrated, they'd be like, wait, what? You know, and this yeah, and that. I, I think... That, I think there is a part of that, right? Like, because strategy, obviously, whenever you have like, if what you're arguing for, like, let me give you an example. If I, what I'm arguing for is bail reform, and I happen to know that what the modest bail reform it is that I'm trying to get you to support only happens to um, cover these nonviolent crimes of these misdemeanors, I'm going to emphasize it because I know that that's going to be a winning point to you, even though in my mind, my heart of hearts, you know what I mean? It should expand to this. But I think there is a... a um, a section of us that don't bother ever to explore at all, don't even bother to contend with the fact that violence is also a product of these things. I think we we ourselves, most of us, end the analysis there because when you say it to people, and they, whenever they even talk about, oh, what they, they'll talk about, you know, abolishing, oh, people who are nonviolent crime or whatever shouldn't be in, in, in pretrial detention or these, these kinds of people, crimes of poverty, people who steal food, who steal this, they make all these special caveats and stuff because they truly do have excluded anything they deem as heinous because they are so focused on what is your moral outrage and your response to whatever it is you think falls under this catch-all, you don't bother to address the fact that it still comes from the same other place. Like it's still, you still have to address it in all of the same way. So I think some of it is us trying, some of us, you know, in the moments we're making the arguments that are better Best appealable, but I also think it's for the most part we have it as a collective weighted into our conversation that violence is also a product of poverty and your environment. Yeah, that is a very complete answer. I've got nothing to add to that. I'm right with you. Thank you. I like to say, do it for a living and add to it, but it's, it's all bad essentially. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of, I guess not prison system, but still kind of talking about it. Another question um, is asking specifically about measure 114 in Oregon. Um, so the law claims that it's going to grant county sheriffs and police chiefs discretion to determine who actually qualifies to purchase a firearm under a new permit to purchase program. They did provide a link to an NPR article, which I'm going to throw into our little chat. So if you guys want to pull that out, mm -hmm. reference it, whatever, whatever, I'm going to go ahead and give that to everyone as well. I'll pull that up. Um, and when you do look at the article, um, the way it's kind of it's titled is saying Oregon's LGBTQ community worries that a new law will keep them from obtaining guns. And so that's kind of our jumping off point here. Um, I'm just familiarizing myself on the fly here. Yeah, no, no, no. You're so good. 
the law, Measure 114, grants county sheriffs and police chiefs discretion to determine who qualifies to purchase a firearm under a new permit to purchase program. But Measure 114 lacks criteria clearly defining what disqualifies applicants, details on what makes someone a threat, and what the data can be used for in law enforcement in making the decision. Oh yeah, this is horrifying already. It's already got all the all the the scary measures. I mean, uh, I, I think like I'm I'm speaking and David, you can I can lay you up here as the two Canadians on the panel, and uh, I, I will say this maybe as someone on the left, I'm not opposed to people owning firearms. I'm not like no one should be able to never own a gun ever in the history of anything. No, uh, yeah, that's okay. that's not my position. I I think it's totally reasonable to because in Canada the system is you need a license in the same way you need a license to drive a car, which makes sense. A car can kill people. You need a license to own a firearm, and you take a two day course where you get gun safety training, uh, and like uh, the, I I think that's a totally reasonable approach. I wouldn't want on the other end of that the police based on criteria that they have complete unfettered control over to be able to determine who is and who is not allowed to own a gun. That to me is just it's just a scary environment to be inside. I will say in, in Canada, they also do background checks to the point where they you have to put down on the paper when you're applying to, to get a license uh, who your significant other is or your ex is and they they actually call them and see if you're someone who should be able to own a gun and that there's oh, no threat there so they go deep and and i think they should um i if it, as lance said like it's like a car like why should you be able to drive a car without a license you shouldn't it's ridiculous why should you be able to operate a firearm or own one without a license it doesn't make any sense to me so uh, i just think it, it makes sense to to really dive into ensuring that you're a person that can handle a weapon and aren't and yeah. gun safety you're not someone that's going to be created. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the law is obviously a bad idea for a million of the obvious of the obvious reasons. I want to say in general, um the way our gun laws are already set up is to prevent other people certain certain people from ever having guns is the reason why they have the kind of criminal possession gun possession charges they have and they riddle the black and brown communities with that and they never there's a reason why they have illegal weapons in the first place because the law is not permitting them to get it the legally way they were they're already being denied permits and all these different things so yeah absolutely this is going to be a further way to discriminate and i also want to say the police have no business being granted said authority i mean the police shouldn't kill that they admit to they shouldn't kill over 1045 people each and every year in america so you know what I mean? And they have the what the highest DV crimes is is absurd that the police would be given that. But yeah, the activists, the activists are absolutely right to to worry. I mean, unless if you think about it, if we go all the way back to to Black Panthers, the Black Panthers coming up with um self-defense, you know, um, we're gonna be a self-defense party, we're all gonna be armed is also what led to crackdown on 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 gun laws in and of itself, but to the response from the police to change their name to protect and serve and to paint this in this dangerous, violent way. It's always been uh the response to the police to to target anybody deemed as activists in general any level of public you know knowledge on that but if they deem you as being armed and yeah they're gonna absolutely they're gonna try and prevent them um from getting weapons also additionally just having to apply for this and put yourself on the radar of the police like um puts you also in in, in a particular position right you you're giving them all of your information they know in the case of certain people and populations yeah obviously harmful yeah, so I live in Oregon, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, I voted affirmatively for this. Um, I don't like the idea of police officers being able to determine who qualifies to purchase a gun. Um, but the way that the law was sold to us was kind of like this is just more of a red flag program. And this element from the law in particular, if I'm remembering correctly, like the wording on the ballot was significantly downplayed like it was just more gun control which i do believe is a good thing like i'm kind of canadian in my orientation towards guns so i agree with like you know lance and, and david there um but in terms of like police officers who are able to make that determination yeah th i don't trust cops and i don't trust that they are the best to judge people um adequately especially marginalized people Sorry. who need firearms I, I was, gonna ask, was there campaigns because I know there's like there's some bills that people suddenly vote for because they saw a lot of advertising and it was like oh it was worded to me a lot um, different. There was that. mostly like, right wing campaigns. I haven't heard the counter arguments uh, from leftists. Um, so because all the sources I'm looking up, they are from pro LGBTQ plus uh, hmm. criticism and and it's civil rights criticism where it's like uh, widely documented abuse amongst law enforcement to abuse their power when restricting firearms to citizens. This has historically obviously targeted black communities and queer communities, blah blah blah, especially queer communities of color, etc. Mm -hmm. um, like it seems like something maybe that 
they wouldn't have probably put in maybe it just wasn't in the writing like i don't know what the ballot measure looked like for you mm -hmm. yeah I, I have the book i need to go back and look um because you know how they have like the arguments for and against and whatnot um yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't really i don't really remember but um yeah framed that way if i would have heard the arguments i probably would have rethought it but it's been a while so i i'm curious now to look it up but I'm a little bit worried based on like the arguments I'm hearing that maybe I didn't do my due diligence before voting for this. Um, <laughs> and but... end in 4K too. <laughs> yeah, have... yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so I have complicated um, thoughts or uh, or you know when it comes to the issue of gun control or guns in general, maybe in America because I think there are a few different competing issues. First of all, I believe, like, regardless of how I feel about guns, like, I don't give a fuck about guns. I'm not somebody who likes guns myself. But when it comes to, I believe that everybody should, if if, if we're going to have it, if you're going to live in a country that sensationalizes guns and Second Amendment, yada, 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 it should be an equal right. There's no reason mm -hmm. why white people could have guns and make it a whole sign of patriotism. Mm -hmm. And you can't see a white person in their American flag without their guns. And it's a symbol of patriotism. But every time a black person in a gun is automatically a criminal image, you know, and gun yeah. possession laws and criminal possession laws and all these gun laws are directed at black people. Black, that's, that's just the reality. And the problem I have with not contending with what gun control is as is proposed to us in America, I if you're going to have the kind of regulation we should have, we should contend with the fact that America is like the largest manufacturer of guns. Mm -hmm. We should limit that shit. That that the, the, that's what the, we need to address that we need to go on that level but the problem is what 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 white america continues to do is the gun control are just more laws laws that lead to the further criminalization of black people and doesn't actually deal with the larger gun issues and the issues and the shootings and the masses and everything that you're responding to in and of itself all you end up doing is preventing exact same populations from ever being able to legally acquire something something they need obviously they should have the same right to bear arms the same right to self-defense especially when you live in communities in and of itself where you have more of a reason to need to protect yourself and especially when you're heavily policed by a militarized police state and then you can never have access to these and they just continue to pass more and more laws as a form of gun control that only criminalize you because at the end of the day it's like yeah i support it in theory yeah like in not this law but in general i believe that america america has a gun problem i believe this country is way too goddamn trigger happy gun should not be what mm -hmm. it is i don't believe that everybody and their mama need a gun and all the guns there there's nothing the second amendment and i could I'll spare y'all actual legal diatribe if anybody wants that in the comments one of these days on what the Second Amendment actually, like, we could go mm -hmm. the constitutional interpretation of that and how in no fucking way, like, it actually could be read out of existence because it ain't like it says, you know, you have the right to have guns forever. It says in order to, you know, form a more perfect militia, blah, 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 it's based on a whole bunch of circumstances of then times. It, why it was you a this white militia, by the way. It's historically, they were talking about a white militia. That's right, like and the, they're also that's talking about... They're also talking about a time in American history that does not resemble the way that our country is currently set up in terms of regular people, locale, whatever, needing these right to bear arms because they are the people that are going and defending these towns and X, Y, Z. So it's a whole bunch of shit. You could technically read that right out of, out of, um, out of existence if you actually wanted to go to the originalism um, approach. But that's another conversation. But what <laughs> I'm saying is, as it, as it, as it currently stands... We are not we are not extending that right to black and brown people while we continue to sensationalize and pump and fuel guns all and all all around the place. And the only gun control we pass are just more criminal laws designed at uh, at punishing restrict because that's what it'll be. Even if initially you think, oh, it's just a red flag law, it's just a system, it's just a check, right, that prevents certain people from getting guns. But what happens when people need guns, when they feel like they need them or they feel like they should have this right to self-defense or they live in communities where they do need that kind of protection, they're going to go and get them anyway right so now that they've been denied this is a whole nother class of people that are going to end up exposed to criminal liability so you actually haven't done anything you haven't done anything to slow the production of guns what guns are around the actual danger you've done nothing to fucking curb the issue all you've done is further criminalize black and brown people so that's my diatribe yeah i mean I, my views on this have certainly evolved over the years because i like if i could thanos snap all guns out of existence i would do that but unfortunately that's not the reality that we're living in so trying to navigate the reality of the world I, I think that there are things that you can do to reduce gun violence in particular like australia had a really good model to where in 1996 after they had a mass shooting they had a robust gun reform plan and they had like a gun buyback program so trying to reduce the existence of so many guns i think is an important priority but yeah to all point 
Um, I think it is important that people who are marginalized, who won't be protected from cops, arm themselves. And my stance has always been a little bit more liberal in my orientation towards guns in the past. But as I see like more lgbtq plus events be targeted by patriot front and proud boys and then you see the response from like vets for equality show up armed and anti-fascists um i think it's becoming abundantly clear that you can't like you can't show up to a gunfight empty-handed like not that i'm saying i'm encouraging fights back and forth but i'm just saying like there needs to be protections um, and so, like, I'm not against gun ownership for sure. Like, there's reform to take. But, like, in terms of this particular law, um, yeah, I I wouldn't support it now if I could go back. But then again, I have to look at how I voted and specifically what I read about it. Because on that one, it seemed pretty clear. And I just read, like, through the little book. So now I'll have to do some research afterwards. And I'll report back um, next week if we can remember. Did, did, <laughs> did they, they suspend in math? On Twitter? Did okay, you know well, this? I was going to say one, one Did they piece really? of quick news. David Dole's power just cut out to anyone who's watching, or if you're still able to watch on David Dole's YouTube. No, you can't. Okay. Well, David Dole's power just cut out. He That's lost why he power. Oh, oh, no. And apparently Binder why? lost his or suspended Twitter account. That's the other thing I saw. His Twitter got suspended? Yeah. They wow. suspended Matt's. I saw someone say it in the stream, and I was like, I thought they were just talking shit, and then I went and checked. It's and true. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh my suspended. god. Wow. That's fucked up for what? Shit what, is getting what real. Trumped up charge. What trumped up charge? Uh, yeah. I, so take your pick. He, he tweeted so many bangers yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> I retweeted a handful of them, but I mean, some of them are still in my cache. Um, basically just the hypocrisy that like, you know how much Elon Musk is flailing right now in public and, you know, in every possible way, um, just consistently quote tweeting, screen grabbing, like clowning on him, uh, which one is still up. Yeah. Remember <sighs> Elon Musk's first Twitter files, the one about Twitter blocking links to the New York Post Hunter Biden story. Elon Musk is using the same thing to block links, links to Elon Jet and other platforms right now. The exact same thing. Oh, welcome back. Hey, sorry. The power went out. That's <laughs> terrible. That's so fucked is up. It- there's a snowstorm right now, so yeah. Oh wow. Uh oh. I'm here in New York. That's fucking crazy. I am very upset for Binder. He does he get it back? Is how long is the suspension? How's it's that suspended. Work? So mm, is so it it's temporary? Not permanent. And by the way, Elon, Elon Musk is suing Elon Jet too. Yeah. It's crazy how well he said he's going to. That's different than actually filing a lot. True, but like yeah. he went from I... saying my commitment to free speech is so strong that I <laughs> no. won't even suspend the account that's tracking me, even if it poses a safety risk, to now saying I'm going to sue them. I mean, Jesus, yeah. their, their their hypocrisy is a feature, not a bug. Like they're just brazen about it. Like they're in your face. Like the hypocrisy, in my opinion, is kind of like a fuck you. Like yeah, I said that, and now I'm doing this. What are you going to do about it? Who cares? I'm not going to lose any support. I'm still going to have my dick riders and my sims. Deal with it. Oh, yeah. But it's just like, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. I, I understand better than, and than most. I don't like when people talk and shit about me on the internet. So I can only imagine no matter who you are, even if you're a villain, if I'm the villain, I'm going to fucking hate the whole internet on my head. And, you know, I probably would abuse my power in a little bit, right? So I could give them a little grace. Like, if I, yeah, for sure. For sure. I run a dictatorship on my social media all the time. On Instagram, the minute you say some shit I don't like, I click restrict. From now on, no one sees your fucking comments, bro. You don't know it, but no one, no one sees I love it. love that you. restrict. Like, oh, oh, my God. That restrict? Oh, I love that shit. If Twitter gets that, it's over for you, bitches. <laughs> but but if, I, if I ran Twitter, I definitely, like, I wouldn't be mad, like, after, when I posted my, my I did an Elon video the other day that went a little viral on Twitter, and they were like, and my friend was like, oh, you're definitely getting shadow banned. I was like, fair, earned. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at that. But if you suspend, I, like, that's, that's a, that's, you can't just be suspending people, like, people's whole Twitter accounts and stuff because you don't like what they say. And kind of, like, that's a different level of, like, this is fucking egregious. I'm like, okay, okay, my guy. Like, B- Bender didn't do anything, like. Uttered oh. shit on you. and like and I'm like oh, also just, just with tiny. the rest of the internet and like I'm like I don't I don't the whole internet shitting on you bro they booed you in life in real life yeah. on the internet like I saw that that was so funny <laughs> that was like hilarious. at a at a Dave Chappelle show mm-hmm. so it's not like you know what I mean it's not like it, it's not us 
You know, like, that's his that's, people. Yeah, know, it's normies, not the woke normies love. Don't like him anymore. Yeah, he lost yeah, the normies. Like, that's that's what that showed me when I when I saw yeah. that. And then like, the fucking the cope afterwards being like, oh, uh, there was actually ninety percent cheers, ten percent <laughs> booze, and, and then a fight <laughs> broke out. You see, it was a fight in the audience. That's that's why they were booing. And then and he, he deleted, deleted both. I was like, that's, that's so the yeah, because it's the most pathetic shit. And the it was all on camera, and then you could see the fight happen. And the fight was when Dave Chappelle was talking, and it was like not even related to like what what happened with him. It was the whole. It's so embarrassing. He's so goddamn embarrassing. Elon Musk is. It's insane. Is. When and every see, time I think he's peak divorce, he keeps growing. Sorry, Blair. <laughs> he's the he's the hello like what is that? How do you do, fellow youths? Kind of guy. <laughs> oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. There was this article from NBC News. They spoke to three people who were there who booed Dave Chappelle, and two of them specifically said that they booed because they didn't like what he was doing with Twitter, and another person said that they booed. Because what? they didn't like how Elon Musk has been firing Twitter employees. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a couple of days. So, like, these aren't woke leftists. These are just straight up his tribe. They're normies. Yeah, 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 yeah they're the normies. So, yeah, I love how Dave Chappelle, too, was trying to... Um... I don't know if you guys know, whatever you're texting is popping up on your screens. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, oh. yeah, I was, I was really... <laughs> Like, don't say anything <laughs> spicy. Just so you know. Yeah. Oh, in this chat? The one we have yeah, right like, here? Yeah. You see it on your face. It, 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 like, it puts it onto your face. Oh. <laughs> Let me, I'll, I'll show you. I'll test it. Let me see. <laughs> That's Eliza, actually hilarious. I did oh, not know Oh, Binder is here. He can tell us about the yeah, band. There yeah, we go. Oh, Binder, I just band man on the internet arrives. I just <laughs> expressed my solidarity with you, Binder. This is some bullshit. This is some bullshit. Wait, I'm sorry. What happened? You're banned? I just got banned Twitter. from Twitter. Oh, okay, Wait, so, my power went out, so I missed that conversation. <laughs> That's insane. He's purging everyone who um who's ever spoken about who who covers him. They uh they've removed Donnie from CNN, Ryan Mack from the New York Times, uh Drew Hardwell from uh the Washington Post. There's a whole list of people who he's suspending, and it's everyone who covers the Elon Musk beat at various publications. I'm Holy I'm shit. banned, baby. Wow, <laughs> is it like a permanent ban? Probably. That's what it says. What? Oh my fucking god, so he's bad. really lost it. Permanent. He's really lost it. That's what it says. Uh, I try to refresh Twitter. There's a little message that says, um, "The weird thing is, I'm I'm able to get in um, to see my feed. It's, I just can't the see any app message." Don't work. It yeah, has some shit because says... ain't no employees. Interface can't even block you right. The man done fucked the whole app up. He can't even, <laughs> he can't even kick motherfuckers off the app properly. The man is an idiot. <laughs> tweet, everyone tweet out for me that I'm on so we can at least get the views on the leftist mafia uh, yeah, 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 stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll you do know? that right now. I'll That's do that right um, now. Oh, my God. This is a train wreck. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I was so close to 100,000 followers, too. <sighs> I was, like, just a few thousand followers away. <laughs> How many like, years I'm, on that I'm, app? I'm really Jeez. fucked up for you. I'm like, I'm really upset. Like, that's, this is bullshit. That's really fucked. Yeah. Hassan just well, tweeted about your ban. Yeah, well, uh, if only there was... Uh, <laughs> hold on, Sam Cedar is messaging me. A whole bunch of people are messaging me right now. I'm like, uh... That's... This is breaking weird. news, wow. folks. Sorry, we haven't had our we first got, got breaking news moment. On the internet. We did. I did see that that Aaron Rupar was also banned. He's a guy that posts a lot of clips online. Him too. Aaron Rupar was banned. Um, see, here's the thing: I could see my live Twitter feed, like the people I follow. I can't see my own posts. How weird is that? That's well, that they don't strange. have employees left to do that. So I heard. Um, what was his name? Uh, uh, Ethan Klein said the same thing when he was suspended, or I guess he's he's still banned. That he he could see the feed, but he can't see his own, or he 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 can't tweet, but he can see the feed. That's, that's some ins- fucking bullshit. Yeah, that's that's so fucked up and arbitrary. Like, there's no reason. It's just you're criticizing Actually, Elon Musk. Yes. What a petty piece I, of I shit. Didn't even, I didn't even post Drew any links Harwell. to I'm feeling wildly that. litigious. <laughs> like, this is real <laughs> fucked up. Like, I'm like, what? Like, like, bring back the Stormfront guy, but ban Matt. Got it. Yeah. I, I didn't post any any location data. I didn't share the links to any of those sites. I, I followed the rules. All I did was criticize him like he said was fine. What, what was the reason I mean, for the ban? What did they give you? 
but they don't tell me nothing yet. I didn't even get an email. Mm. It just says oh, I've been when I try to when I try to log in, <laughs> I basically get a message that says your account is suspended and is not permitted to perform this action. Like when I try to refresh or whatever, mm -hmm. but I could see my feed of people who I follow. Elon rushed into Twitter headquarters in the dead of the night to block you personally. <laughs> that man went there with his robe on and bed just slippers like, get out of the fucking way. <laughs> oh, wow. Someone in my oh. chat, Tony, saying uh, uh, Donnie O'Sullivan as well. He's Isn't he that CNN guy that interviews yeah. like... All, all of Taylor freaks? Loren's tweets just disappeared. Taylor Wren's entire Twitter He's account. doing a purge yeah. as we speak. He's doing the purge. Oh Holy <laughs> shit, folks. Check Wren's your accounts. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my God. Uh-oh, somebody just posted him and Jizz Lane. They're going to be gone. I just, I see that through my uh, feed. Everyone should fucking post that image. Fuck that. Yeah, everyone. Just... <laughs> the only reason I'm still on this shitty platform is because news gathering and, like, clips go of, like, shit that I, can, I have to cover, right? So, otherwise, I would be off this garbage. Like, I don't need yeah. to be on Twitter. <laughs> There's no reason. Yeah. Except that I do this fucking job. Yeah, same. And to make his life worse. Yeah, and someone in my chat saying, meanwhile, Elon's tweet doxing that kid is still up. I don't know what that's about, but if he doxed somebody, yeah, that's fucked. Uh, so he basically claimed, and this is where the story gets really interesting yesterday, that he was attacked in his car with his children in the vehicle when someone jumped on top of his vehicle. And then he posted a video of him, I assume it's him, filming someone who's wearing a mask and then saying, does anyone know who this is? And then he films the person's license plate. The weird thing is, is that like now there's other groups potentially associated with government agencies that are saying that based on their tracking of the GPS, that he was not actually at that place at that time. So something isn't adding up as of Right now it's all very weird uh it's also dangerous because if that person i mean that person could have been the person who jumped on his car could not be but we've seen the power elon has now to basically label someone say like a pedo like say you'll l l what is it the head of trust and safety you'll roth mm -hmm. like i'm not here to defend ceos and millionaires and, and fucking of, of corporations and giants but by elon saying that this person is a pedo look at his phd thesis it proves he's a pedo when the phd thesis had nothing to do with being a pedo it was that queer kids go on grinder we should acknowledge this and do something about it because they will do that. That's mm -hmm. it's just that's the real world. That's what we live in. That's what his PhD thesis. And, you, and then he's like, yeah, it's because he's a groomer. Now that person got so much death threats and hate that they had to move. Like he has he has the power to swarm people if he wants to. His political enemies, his business enemies, anything he wants. It's 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 a boy with a toy, and he's playing with this toy like you would expect a dictator to right now. Except it has the power to destabilize countries and do revolutions. We, we have a billionaire evil dictator who has the power to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> As much isn't as... he just like losing all that money? Like that that's forty four billion. Oh yeah. I mean he, he it, it was already worth like, you know, not even half that at this point. But mm -hmm. now you're really killing the platform. Like at this point you're really burning that money by doing shit like this. Like the why would people stay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why are advertisers gonna stay? Why is anyone gonna stay? That that's that's relevant. Yeah. Did you see that he actually personally calls chief executives if they suspend advertising to like berate them? And so this led yeah, to other but, uh, corporations essentially just like reducing ads to the bare minimum so as to go unnoticed and not get a call from Elon Musk. Like everyone just doesn't want to associate with him because he's such a fucking weirdo. But you're kind of attached because if you sever that tether, then he's going to call you and berate you personally. I mean, what a freak show. What a freak. I'd rather honestly Twitter just completely go the way of the dodo at this point based on how he's seen it like like i use twitter i like twitter i use it for my show like david also but i mean at this point it, it just it, it's so bad and i kind of wanted to go down just as a fuck you to elon musk too yeah I, by, the, yeah. by the way, I just I just want to point out when Matt Binder went on Tim Pool's show, he was debating and arguing with Tim Pool. And at one point, Tim Pool brings up this whole free speech argument. And then Matt Binder was like, well, yeah, I sometimes feel that Republicans just want to say the N word. And Tim Pool's like, no, we don't. As soon as Baked Alaska was allowed back on the platform, one of the first things he did was post a poll. Should I say the N word? Yes or no. And obviously his audience was like, yes. <laughs> And then he got roasted, like, nonetheless, because he was, like, spewing a whole bunch of anti-Semitic nonsense at the same time. So, Matt, I'm, I'm glad you got proven right in, in real time with one of, one of Tim's friends. <laughs> yeah, is Tim Pool yeah. now going to say that it's a right-wing outlet? Because that's what his argument was. His argument was with the opposite before. That was, like, a pro-leftist. Uh, like, the TOS is baked in because misgendering uh, is considered hate speech. And since 
right wingers don't accept the identity or the legitimacy of trans people, then that's inherently biased against conservatives. When it's like they have religious protections too and whatnot. Uh, but is is Tim Pool going to come out and say that it's now officially biased against the left because it's very clearly more biased than it ever has been? Well, no. Yeah, I mean, no, I, 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 I <laughs> it's so ridiculous that uh, this is going on right now. I mean, what is going to be the response? Like, how do you like what? Like, just it's not even like uh, you know, it's not even well planned out. They're literally just knocking out every journalist who dared to criticize Musk. Yeah. Um. Like I, I, I don't, I don't remember if I've said it on this show or if I'm texting people this, but I never shared the Elon Jet uh, links. I never shared a location info. I just criticized him for banning the account uh, because it was posting basically public information, um, and that's it. I mean, I, I always made sure that I followed the terms of service and the rules, whether it was old Twitter, new Twitter. Uh, you know, I can't retroactively go back like Elon Musk wanted Elon Jet to do. Uh, you know, follow rules that weren't even made yet. Uh, but I bet if you even looked at all my old tweets, if you could find them, nothing ever broke any <laughs> any policy, past, present, or future. Yeah, you don't even <laughs> curse on Twitter, Matt. Like, I rarely even see you curse. Like, there's nothing. There's no there there. How can he get you? It's just it's straight up just pettiness. It doesn't tell Ain't you no like why you're banned or like what offending tweets or whatever. It it doesn't say nothing. I didn't even get an email. I told y'all Elon did that shit personally. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, yep. there's, no, there's no formal notice. He did that like, fuck Matt. Like, that's, <laughs> that is what happened, okay? Yep. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's some that's some bullshit. There's no, that's the thing is, there's no longer, from the minute Elon took over, it's clear there are no, there are no longer a Twitter or rules or service or none of that shit. Like, it's just, it's just whatever Elon wants to fucking do. And that's apparently wage war. On on child, I, I want to say all of us, but I don't want to put my my Twitter account on on notice with. with <laughs> and I'm like I'm like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it so smooth if you if he takes my Twitter account. When they come on here real smooth, I will come on here like Franklin in season five, carrying the fuck off. <laughs> fucking problem, okay? I talk about act a fucking fool. I'll be on Instagram <laughs> calling for that man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I I I should have spent more time on other accounts. I mean, I regret spending all this time on Twitter now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a bunch of people following me on like um, on like uh, you know, uh, uh, Instagram and elsewhere. But I, I I don't post on there. I guess I gotta start. Yeah, I same. I honestly you can, you can I honestly just YouTube liked channel. Twitter. Honestly, to be fair, was, I mean, that YouTube was me too. That was me too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Mastodon was banned too, by the way. A competitor to Twitter. I don't know why though. Like a link to the like their their account or a link to their the official Mastodon Twitter account. They were ba banned. Yeah, they were banned. Yeah, they so shared the Elon on. Jet. How could they anyone share the link to Elon you're Jet? banning competition? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. What see, a I fucking didn't even share... fucking you know clown! I, I hope Elon's listening. You know, fucking clown! You know, you're a fucking clown. You know what I shared? <laughs> I shared shit. the um. For all banned. I shared that. I shared that post that Donnie posted from CNN before he got banned. Did you guys see that? No. No. Okay, so, so uh, Donnie from CNN, Donnie O'Sullivan, he covers like you know the right, and he's yeah, guy he's who great. usually is on the street at the Trump rallies and stuff. Uh, he reached out to the LAPD, and they got and they gave him a statement on the Musk incident. LAPD's threat management. And remember, Elon Musk said he was accosted. His his car was accosted. Uh, he blamed Jack Sweeney's um, uh, Elon Jet account, which tracked his private jet, and. Um, you know, and he said that his car was attacked with his kid in it or whatever. And the LAPD said LAPD's threat management unit is aware of the situation and tweet by Elon Musk and is in contact with his representatives and security team. No crime reports have been filed yet. So there was no police report. I the mean, just be lying. I, that's you just be lying. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how rich people do it. Uh, but, um, you know, as he said, he was going to take legal action against Jack Sweeney, the, the the 20 year old who's running that Elon Jet account on other platforms. But how are you gonna, you, you didn't even file a police report. No judge is gonna, they're gonna think it didn't happen. You gotta file, at the very least, you gotta file their police report so you have the paper trail.
He's not doing it because he doesn't intend to do anything other than give his little people on the internet something to suggest that there's something real or he's the one that's really in danger. That's how he's trying to switch the narrative because he's in trouble because he's literally attacking trans people and all this. So that's how he tries to re-victimize himself. He has no intention of doing anything legal. He's just talking a whole bunch of shit. Just a bunch of bullshit in his app for people to say. That's why that's the use of my child. My child was in the car. Like he be with his fucking children. Give me a fucking break. Like that's lying just lying well he has to live with the fact that most people see through him most people see him as a fraud and the only people who accept how uncharismatic and uncreative and stupid he is are right wingers like that's the only tribe that would accept him the dumbest people ever when he wanted to be like the next iron or like a real life iron man he wanted to be seen as like this great entrepreneur who take humanity to mars but no he's just the shit poster who right wingers like because they're letting uh, that he's letting them back on. Um, so he's he's pathetic and sad, and he has all the money in the world, but he can't buy love and support from people, real people. And he lo- and he looks like condensed milk. He straight up does. <laughs> and that part. <laughs> and that and part. That part. <laughs> yeah, his body is like a, very like a, weirdly shaped. No, I, I I got one. He looks like the stock photo that is used in the Tinder ads for the swipe left part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that though. All right. Well, um, I've I got... gotta say it's a good list. It's a good list to be on. Don, uh, Donnie O'Sullivan, Ryan Mack, yeah, uh, Drew Harwell, uh, Micah Flea from Intercept. You might be getting uh, some like Mastodon. mainstream media uh, yeah. Yeah. request to come on like i could see cnn like contacting you <laughs> I mean, yeah like, come talk about yeah. this shit. <laughs> it's it's really well, nice that you're here because like the viewers went up to like 700 instantly because it's like oh the band matt bender the most censored I'm man the I'm I'm yeah. too hot for twitter <laughs> censored <laughs> holy shit my viewers on twitch went up too there's like multiple of us streaming on twitch and yeah i mean I mean, I, I, I didn't – like, oh, I wish that, I had an interesting right story. I wish I had an interesting story other than I've been critical of Musk for, for a long time. I mean, people don't, people don't realize – I don't think people know this story because I've been, I've been tweeting a lot about Nexium lately because of people like um, uh, James Lindsay, who is apparently very close with Nexium's Nikki Klein, who helped oh, groom mm-hmm. women for, um, for uh, Keith Raniere, the convicted uh, sex trafficker who ran the Nexium uh, grooming sex cult. And people don't know this story, really, I don't think. But in 2018, Elon Musk was going goo goo gaga over to this website called The Knife of Aristotle, uh, saying how this is how, you know, this website is how, you know, he said it inspired him that he should get, you know, start his own media organi- organization because this is how, like, the news should be done or whatever. I don't remember exactly what it says, but he was, like, thinking it was a great website. Turns out that The Knife of Aristotle was a propaganda outlet for Nexium. It was run by members of Nexium so they could control the narrative and fight back about bad uh, bad press about their sex cult. This is before Keith Raniere went to jail. So he literally was was uh, uh, you know adoring this fucking this fucking cults propaganda outlet and saying how it was a wonderful example of good media. So I mean this is this is what he wants, you know? This is what he wants. This is who he is. And, you know, uh, I guess next you'll see uh, him tweeting Nikki Klein on Twitter and uh, talking about how Keith Raniere should be free and the FBI planted all that evidence where he was uh, grooming and raping 12-year-olds and 15-year-olds and branding women like cattle. I'm sure he'll say all that stuff was planted by the FBI next. See, I didn't even know about that. I thought that the Jizz Lane picture was incriminating enough. And the accusations of other people being pedophiles was incriminating enough. But one thing that's ironic about all of this is last week he tweeted the follow the rabbit, which is essentially a QAnon rallying cry. And then people on QAnon messaging boards were ecstatic that Elon Musk might be one of them. And it's so bizarre to consider like this group who thinks that there's this elitist cabal of pedophiles who's drinking the blood of children is ecstatic that Elon Musk pictured with Ghislaine Maxwell is now one of them. Like, he's the person who you should be suspicious of, right? I mean, if you think that Hillary Clinton is sucking up the adrenochrome from these kids, then, you know, Elon Musk has got to be orders of magnitude more guilty. I I still understand it. Like, freaks love him. And that says a lot about him. These are the people who he attracts. Freaks flock to him like stank on shit. Absolutely. 
Well, YouTube.com slash Matt Binder. Everyone should subscribe to be there. <laughs> there uh, Patreon.com slash Matt Binder. Um, you know, Twitter was my main, my main, uh, you know, my main platform that I posted on. So, you know, hundred thousand or close to hundred thousand followers. I basically uh, probably have to start all over again somewhere else. Wow. So, I mean, uh, Instagram.com slash Matt Binder. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what else to p- 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 promote. Really, those. Are my, oh, uh, I guess the newsletter. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have a substack at misinfo.substack.com, like misinfo as in misinformation, M-I-S-I-N-F-O. Um, subscribe there. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, just bizarre turn of events. <laughs> yeah, Twitter's not going to be the same without you. Like, um, you, you post some bangers. Yeah, well... It's okay. It's okay. I'll be fine. It's what what really gonna suck is when I wake up tomorrow morning and I usually just grab my phone and see what's going on. (laughs) 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 That's when it'll hit me. That's when I'll be like, "Fuck." (laughs) Matt, do you want to share my account? We'll make it a Mike and Matt account. I'll just give you the password. And you're gonna be (laughs) and you'll be suspended immediately. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it'll be like one of those couple Facebook accounts, but instead, just like. Two, two people just like, no, Matt's back. I hope you got your account back. This is some bullshit. I know, that's like, so fucked up. I'm genuinely so like, disappointed. I'm like sick for you. Like the, the work that goes into building a platform, and we are around the same amount of followers, so I understand, I feel deeply. Organically, with no bots or anything. I mean, I think the oh, way, I, like people who track like, social media, they value that at like, it's, it, it's like that's almost worth like 90K or something to have an account yeah. that huge because you have yeah. the ability to spread information Millions. on a very large platform. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have your last people, tweet, by the way. Because we actually have to build our own platform. Right. Unlike, uh, mm-hmm. unlike the right, we actually have to build our own platforms. Like, we exactly. don't have fucking bots and shit. We don't pay for advertising. So, like, we, we don't so, do any someone, of that. Someone contact my buddy Tim Poole and ask him uh, what's going on. <laughs> I mean, hey, how many, how many, how many lefties does he, uh, how I, many lefties does he have on the show? I mean, it shows that, that I'm is... one of the few who reach out and contact and interact, and I'm totally open to talking with people. That's what Elon Musk wanted, right? Free speech. Hell, I even Mark, said. I even said I agree with uh, the idea that people shouldn't be permanently banned. I believe everyone should have like a, 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 a you know amount of time and then be brought back. And if they break the rules again, then ban them again. I also agreed with people with his idea that people should know whatever filter or shadow banning they have on their account so they could fix it and stop tweeting a certain way if it's breaking the rules or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, those are the only good ideas he had. The rest of everything, the rest of everything he wanted to do, sucks. And um, you know, if this is what he wants, I mean, I, I can't imagine. Um, you know, I think this is a this is a major uh, step in people uh, changing their mind about this platform. I'm not saying because of me. I mean, the aggregate of it, and I'm sure there's mm-hmm. still people being banned. I mean, what everyone who dares to report on or criticize Elon Musk, even if they're following Twitter policy, gets banned. I mean, how does that work? The whole point of Twitter is that it's a politics and news media outlet more so than any other social media platform. Um, without that, this this platform dies. Like that's yeah. the whole point of it. That's the whole yeah. point of it. People could go I, on Facebook and Instagram to do entertainment and post pictures and video. Uh, you know, that's what those sites are for, honestly. Mm-hmm. Let the record reflect that Tim Pool is this week's white person. Y'all are discussing that I do not know. I just, I just wanted to add him to that's, my. That's going to be a, a, a current theme. He's known as the beanie man. Some say he's more beanie than man. We don't know if the beanies <laughs> become sentient or if it controls or poisons his mind. There's theories that perhaps it's actually like, he's like Superman in that instead of wearing like a costume, he has beanies. He only wears a black beanie in everything you will see him do. I don't know if he showers in the beanie. I don't know if he poops with the beanie. We don't know. Was don't, he born really with the beanie? Book. Was he born with the beanie? We may never know. You know, it's, it's a tough thing. But uh, that's that's always easy to remember. He's got like a uh, top, I would say, next to Crowder and a couple of their accounts, two or three of the largest political YouTube channels in existence. Mm-hmm. And he's he's got a, an entire compound that he has with the skate park and all his like, you know, he calls them his friends, but there's employees because they all work for him. So he's basically got like 30 employees who live with him who are also his friends and family that he pays and gives instructions to. And then uh, he does all his propaganda from there. But it's a rotating cast 
of white supremacists. I don't think anyone realizes how intense Tim Pool's fucking cast is, but it's nuts. He had like uh, uh, a Christian fascist. He had on a neo-Nazi, Nick Fuentes. He had on, then it was like Milo or Milo Yiannopoulos. And then it was like, oh, here's John Doyle, Jack Pasebic, an avowed white nationalist who does a fucking shit oh. ton of like, it's, it's just like a rotating cast of fucking the worst of the worst. Like it's wild that it's like, it's it's so popular and he gets away with it because not a lot of people like call mm-hmm. that out. I don't know. What but it he's is. a centrist, though. Remember, he's yes, a centrist. Sorry. Milk goes with the fence dirt. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grow wary. I grow wary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I feel almost I, guilty introducing you to all these folks. I don't know how me. you've avoided this for so long. It's I really, like... I it's unbelievable how often I don't know who y'all talking about. <laughs> like I'm like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Isn't he the dude though that like did that kind of uh like music video song that was reminiscent of like Creed from the year two thousand? Oh something? right, he's, that... he's got he's got two now, two. Oh, that's like well, the thing I know about technically him. three, technically really? three. Did, he's did, he's did got the Creed? animated one. Yeah. I did, did say, say three. Now, 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 no, I know enough. Yeah, you, that's, you should okay, be embarrassed. Does that help? I know enough. <laughs> that's to know how I understand it. When embarrassment it's... should befall us. I think we can well, play no, 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 a song, no. right? It's not that's, copyright. That's, a, that's an embarrassment to Creed, if we're being completely fair. And that's saying something, all right? I'm, I'm not a not a fan of Creed or anything that Creed does, but like this is this is very. It's like I called it rage with the machine because it is very <laughs> like you know um, <laughs> they are working against us, but we uphold the structures of power, like shit like that. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's like so it's, it's it's negative punk rock, you know? It's to the opposite of anyone rebelling. It's like conformity, <laughs> conformity. My one of my yeah. one of my high school and college ex boyfriends' favorite band was Creed, and uh, oh, I, I, yes, I just wanted to uh, so express awesome. express the shames that I am living with just by having been adjacent to. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will not take any any follow up questions or inferences that you may make <laughs> about that information. You you leave that there. <laughs> like, just to update, uh, Keith Oberman's also in band now. Oh, what? why is Keith, why is he was, Keith Oberman been banned? <laughs> he was also he was apparently very critical Jackson of Elon Musk on Twitter, so that appears to be the reason. So what a this... soft bitch! <laughs> Just gotta say, yeah, something. wow, yeah. But seriously, uh, it's seriously, like he's like Trump ridiculous. with the power of Twitter. Like that's this is what <laughs> yeah. Trump would do if Trump controlled Twitter. <laughs> I'm like, so when, so so about this this banning thing, this on because because I talk shit on him like. If he didn't get to me like two days ago, viral video, I'm good. Am I in the clear? Like, I just want to know if, <laughs> like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm like, oh, is it is it coming in now? Is it an illicit that he just hasn't got to O? Because you know what I mean? I'm like, hold on. Like. Okay, I do have some uh, breaking news. Glenn Greenwald is responding to all of the bands, at least to Aaron Rupar, but this is a broader. Oh, no way. Um, Let's see. So before I do, do we want to take any guesses? Is he gonna be pro free speech? Oh, of course. Like, someone, how do you all think ask, he's gonna? Someone, someone ask, someone ask, someone ask uh, Glenn Greenwald how he feels about me getting suspended. Someone who uh, worked with his good buddy Michael Brooks, who he, when he listened to the majority report of Glenn Greenwald said to Sam Cedar apparently that it's that he's uh, you know he he loves hearing Michael and Matt because he thinks they're uh, they, you know they do a a great job. Ask him how he feels about me. Uh, mm-hmm. I know he's not a fan of mine anymore but he used to think highly of me and i used to think highly of him too actually yeah i my my vote is going to be squarely in that he's going to mock the people who got kicked off because that's what he does ding, he's, ding, he's ding. going to make fun I of mean, them in, knows, in their own words he's, that's what that's what he's, he always does with this shit. he's 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 tipped the, his hat to me before because he says how it's how I engage with people because he saw me debating Michael Tracy, Tim Pool and he says, you know, kudos to Matt for engaging. I mean, what is he going to say? I would love to know. Yeah. I'd love to know what he thinks about uh yeah, but well, pull, pull it hey. up. Well, this this isn't about this is about Aaron Rupar, not necessarily you, but just in general the bands. So he says what happened to private companies have the right to disassociate themselves from anyone they want. Have you ever heard of the terms of service? If you don't like how Twitter does content moderation, start your own social media site. Remember all these arguments? That's his response. Of what course. terms were broken? That's my response. What fucking terms were broken? Yeah. It's one thing to have a terms of service because people are on there, you know, spouting uh, horrible racist shit or dangerous shit, doxing, that kind of thing. But B- Bender clearly obviously wasn't doing that. No, mm-hmm. Aaron Rupar, who posts clips from like CNN, like, <laughs> yeah. what was he doing? Like, come on. 
I, he needs to just put in the TOS no making fun of um uh, of Elon Musk. Just put it in the TOS. Sorry, we just got a huge raid from uh from TYT, so I was just saying thank you for the raid. And also oh, we have cool. the most banned person on the internet right now, Matt Binder here. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, banned yeah. too hot for Twitter. Silence. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to Matt Bender. It's, yeah, it's really, it's really. YouTube.com slash Matt Bender, Twitch.tv slash Matt Bender, Instagram.com slash Matt Bender. I'm pretty much Matt Bender on every platform. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the, the ridiculous thing about all the Elon Musk dick riders that continue to be behind him when he's obviously making ridiculously catastrophic, uh, hypocritical decisions in plain sight is that at, at the end of the day. They don't actually want all of the left banned off Twitter. That's the only reason why they want to be there is to see what we're doing and fuck with us. If that was the truth, they would go be happy on Truth Social, but they don't fucking like it there, Mm -hmm. right? Like, they have Reddit, they have Truth Social, they have the YouTube comments, they have other fucking places on the internet, but they want to be on Twitter because that's where we be. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, at the end of the day, they don't really want us off Twitter, so I'm like, y'all might want to tell your boy to chill the fuck out. You might want to. Because you're not going to like it when you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, when you got to go find and search it out. Because at the end of the day, it's not like they have any ability to come up with narratives or anything of their own. They have no real plight. They have no real agenda. They have nothing they really want to discuss. All they want to do is respond to what we're talking about and talk shit. So if y'all want to know what the fuck we're talking about so you can talk shit, you might want to get your boy. (laughs) That's such a great point. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because every single right-wing alternative has essentially failed. I mean, Parler is dead. Truth. Truth Social. I mean, I don't Parler's, know. Parler's down eighty percent of what its original. Ooh. Or yeah, it's, Parler's down eighty percent from its peak, and that has a lot to do with not being allowed on. I think both the Apple and Google Store, but then it got okay. allowed on one of those two. Um, Gab has always been fucking the Nazi for social. No, only Nazis hang out there. Uh, Parler is also terrible, by the way. If you haven't tried it, uh, uh, Locals is so exclusive. Like I, they made me wait a year, and then Dave Rubin canceled my Locals account. <laughs> it, was, it was brutal. Yeah, he made me wait a year. Uh, it was called debate sam cedar you coward dot locals dot com, and uh, it said like pending approval for a full year, and then just deleted it. I, I don't know why, but yeah. So fuck. Oh, that we shit. know so, why, Lance. <laughs> we know why. <laughs> I'll be right back. Up. I hope they like. I hope like. Because I've seen him um, ban some of these people's like suspend some Twitter accounts, and then people talk shit on Twitter, and they you know appear back. I hope you get yeah. your Twitter back, like. I really oh, like. I'm personally somebody who recognizes that I will collapse if somebody take my Twitter account. I don't. I don't even want y'all to think. Don't let me play it cute. If that ever happens to me and I come on here being like, "Oh, it's all good. cap," I was in here distraught. I was crying. I was bawling. All of that. Like that's 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 absurd. I hope you. I hope you get a back match. You built it and you were doing great shit with it. And you really didn't you break were. the rules. Oh, Honestly, I didn't see you days. talk about him worse than uh, like other people. <laughs> And you, you were on fire last couple of days. I'll just say that. Like, just tweet after tweet after tweet. It was like he I would mean, do something I, that, that you just, like, point mm-hmm. out the hypocrisy. I, I didn't. I didn't even share the Elon Jet stuff. Like I said, everything I, I've criticized him. I've uh, wrote. Uh, I was just on a uh, a foreign news program, uh, a, Turkish, a Turkish program. And they asked me uh, about the Twitter files, and I said what I thought, how it was being presented as, you know, uh, very biased, and it wasn't, we're not seeing the raw data, we're not seeing the raw stuff, it's being, there's a certain narrative being pushed, but then they even, but then they were really trying to push like a pro-Elon Musk thing, and they asked me what I thought about Elon Musk's decision to, uh, where he said people should be able to see if they have ghost ban or uh, a trends blacklist and stuff like that, I was like, I think that's a great idea, and if Elon Musk actually wants to, you know, uh, roll out uh, features that make things more transparent, then I would support that 100%. That's a good idea. I mean, I've been as fair as fair could be. Uh, it's not my fault that uh, being fair means that I got to shit on 99% of what you do because 99% of what you do is shit. Fucked up. Absolutely. Red Mike on. Blair, question us. I'm here. I got you. Okay, well, now that Matt is here, Let's just keep that focus going. Um, it's time to talk about the Donald Trump cards, if you don't mind walking us mm. through that story. Trump NFTs. Matt, that's yep. all you. Oh, Matt, me. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Hey, wait, wait. Before you start, Matt, I want to ask you, what did you think the day before when you saw the whole, like, animated thing with Trump? And it's like, plop, sheer, you know, and, like, all the cats jump and all that stuff. Like, what did you think? What did you think the announcement was? 
Oh, I, I actually, um, I saw someone uh, speculate NFTs. I don't remember who. I was just mm. scrolling, and I actually, I actually thought that the NFTs already dropped the other day because I saw that tweet. And I don't really check what Donald Trump does anymore, for the most part, on Truth Social. Yeah, um, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, because um, it wasn't too surprising to me because I knew that. Um, uh, you know, Melania had dabbled in NFTs and there were other Donald Trump uh, crypto projects that were unofficial, like non-licensed. And, uh, you know, uh, Don Jr. had reached out to them to like work things out or something. I don't know exactly what came of that. Um, but uh, when I saw it drop today, I was a little bit surprised because I didn't realize that uh, <laughs> that it wasn't already done. And then once I looked more into it, I was like, oh, shit, this is like a full fledged Donald Trump fully on board, fully licensed, 100 percent Donald Trump, uh, you know, product like throw it on the, you know, throw it on the pile with the Trump steaks and the Trump uh, water bottles and stuff like that. Um, Trump University. So, at least you yeah, get a steak. At least you get some meat. That's true. You know? <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, Donald Trump uh, had a major announcement, he said the other day, and that major announcement was an NFT project. Uh, his followers and supporters are really not happy, actually. It's very interesting to see. This is really the first time I've seen it at this level um, where they're really upset with him because they were expecting something big. Like, you should see some of the replies to him on Truth Social. It's like, how could you do this to us? We're fighting a very serious war. And for you to drop trading cards right now, it's very unserious. <laughs> like, they're trying to, like, they're trying to, like voice amazing. their displeasure at him in the nicest way possible. Yeah. Um, some people... Uh, Baked Alaska, who's back on Twitter, Baked Alaska's on Twitter, uh, and I'm not. Uh, Baked <laughs> yeah, Alaska, who's back on Twitter, he tweeted out, I can't believe I'm going to jail now for an NFT salesman. <laughs> Which I got to <laughs> hand, that's hand the it. That's funniest funny thing he's tweet. ever said. Yeah, yeah. That's the funniest thing he's ever said. I saw some people think that, that he was going to go and announce his like, VP as Carrie mm -hmm. Lake or some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they oh, really like, Scott, took I, it. Was, that, that was Dilbert creator Scott yeah, right. Adams. Oh, yeah, okay. Scott Adams said that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we want to take turns uh, sharing our favorite Trump NFT? Because mine is the one with him blasting off into space. And the reason why that's my favorite one is because he says that these are based off of his life and career. So I really do appreciate him, <laughs> you know, um, minting that in an NFT when he blasted off into space. That was that was really great. Yeah, I guess I forgot when he did that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look at them again to find a favorite. Yeah, I know. I was like, I remember so the ridiculous. golf one, the cowboy one. The cowboy one's pretty funny. The football one. There's him as a professional race car driver, which yes. is a banger. That's right. NASCAR They're driver. They're all very flattering. One. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the proportions. And yeah, everything. one of him, he has They're just a completely real. different body. Mm -hmm. And they're using the yep. head. If you were to Google, like, Trump head transparent, like, they just copy-pasted that onto a cartoon body that's very, very different than Trump's. Okay, I haven't seen these. Let me Google this. They're really like, good. But if, if you I'm buy 45 of them, then you get to have dinner with Trump at a, <laughs> which I assume would be a giant banquet, like a, a donor, basically, which would cost about $4,500 $4, to buy 40, uh, 45 of those. McDonald's Damn. does not cost that much. <laughs> <laughs> He's selling 45,000, 45,000 NFTs for $100 a piece. They claim so that they won't copy the same one more than 20 times. So I'm not sure how the math works out, but mm -hmm. that that turns out to be a lot of different versions of Trump I'm, in. I'm getting an image. I'm getting lots of email requests, <sighs> so I'll be here on stream. You're a hot <laughs> commodity oh, yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before before I react, what your fame? Before I react, I know y'all. This tell me this ain't this ain't what he's selling. This ain't this, yeah. this ain't. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that, that, that's a hundred dollars. He's even in a video. Well, actually, no, you have three, so that's three hundred dollars. You're, you're holding three hundred dollars worth of value. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's even in a video that like talking like selling them like like an infomercial. It's so it's embarrassing like <laughs> that he would do that. <laughs> Did you the see the moment so in that video where he goes off script temporarily because he's he's like reacting and finding out in real time that one of the prizes because when you when you purchase an NFT, you're automatically entered into a sweepstakes. But one of the prizes was dinner with him. And he's like, OK, I guess that's a great prize. Uh, I guess that's. That's what we're offering, like something to that effect where he was just like so shocked. You could see it that that was all that they were offering for how high of a price that they were charging for it. Who, um, who the fuck want to go to dinner with Jabba the Hutt? I, it, would, that, his bullshit. would that not be like 
Uh, okay, no, no, actually, as I'm convincing myself as I think it through, it would either be the worst thing ever or the best thing ever, just in terms of, like, entertainment value. You could turn it into content, that's for sure. That's true. That's true. People in my chat are saying Matt Binder is trending on Twitter right now. Matt, Whoa! you're going to be famous. You get well, strikes and enjoy it. into the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, uh, patreon.com slash Matt Binger if I could, if I could listen to hell if I could uh, you know that would be totally worth it if all of a sudden I got to uh, do this full time honestly so please uh, uh, do it full time on my terms I should say obviously I'm a full time journalist but the dream is to do it my way uh, a la a la you know, um, uh, yeah, you know all Binger. the other wonderful <laughs> journalists who are able to uh yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, this may number not be one a up there with guys for you, actually. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash Matt Binder. I mean, I was, yeah. I was, I've, I'm working on a number of things that I don't even know if I was going to be able to publish via, um, you know, my usual outlet. Um, I was looking into the various ties between right wingers and Nexium, which there's a lot. You'd be very surprised. I'm surprised mm. this isn't already a piece that people have already looked into. Um, yeah, there's a, a yeah, I, I don't see the screenshot, I don't see the trending thing. So, if you could take a, a screenshot of that, um, yeah, uh, so, mm -hmm, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> where are you gonna go? Well, it, it, like, right when Twitter now? classes, what's happening? I know, I don't know where the, the meetup <laughs> is gonna be, honestly. Wait, what? Yeah, a meetup, like when Twitter collapses, well, like, where do you go after Twitter? Yeah. Do we all just Instagram. disperse? Like, what happens? Where do we Where really do we meet? Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I don't use it though. Uh, it's not good for like feed and like news gathering and I don't know. Because you have text. to post a picture, right? You can't just post post text. I don't really use Instagram that much. You You can post. I mean, you can post text in an image. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. I post my I post like some like tweets on there. I post my videos. I do a lot mm -hmm. of I mean y'all do a lot of video content too, obviously. So mm -hmm. you know, I find that it's actually like better in that sense than Twitter is because I have a million videos on Twitter, but you miss it, you don't know what to type in, you know what I mean? It's gone. So Instagram, I like it in that respect. But I haven't created a Mastodon and honestly, I don't think I I don't really I'm I don't feel appealed to. Everybody keeps telling mm -hmm. me to join it, but all I see is, you know, moderator issues. Honestly, it's a congregation of the nerds, um, to be honest. Like, I'm not on Twitter purely to hear, hear just from us in, like, a little nerd echo chamber with bad moderation. Like, I'm not... I'm not feeling that. Like, I like... I, I, I'm a strong believer that Black Twitter is the backbone of Twitter. Um, that's what makes the app hype for me, and... That's not on Mastodon, so mm -hmm. you know I have, you know, I haven't, I haven't gone over there yet. That's not to say that I can't be convinced or that I never will. Like, I am, I am, I reserve the right to change my position and go crawl in to Mastodon with everybody else. Well, um, it's it's <laughs> weird because there's like a bunch of servers, and the one server that I picked, I still haven't received like my confirmation email. This was like a month ago, the night when we all thought that Twitter was going to collapse, um, when the offices were shut. And so I don't I don't even know how to get in. The barrier to entry seems kind of like high, comparatively speaking. Um, and then we can't really migrate to TikTok because it seems like that's going to go the way of the dodo based on how things are going currently. And I'm, I mean, I am on TikTok, but there's just no alternative to Twitter, in my opinion, at least that's like... I don't think so either. That's competitive. Yeah. I, I just once yeah. that goes, then that whole ecosystem, that community, like it just disperses. It's not like, like when Dig... De like died everyone had reddit to go to but like what's what's the next twitter there really is nothing uh so yeah, it, it I mean, sucks yeah twitter i mean as much as you know twitter has obviously its faults and its flaws like the entire rest of the internet twitter is a pretty amazing app i would i would say um and i don't think there is a, a, a replacement and as much as like it is undeniable at this point that Elon Musk is obviously doing his endeavor best to kill the fucking app. If for mm -hmm. no other reason, even you know, with our staunch loyalty, he's crashing the interface. Like the app just does not work the way it 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 once did at all. Um oh, but that trash, being said, mm -hmm. yeah, I think if I if I think if I use it purely, if I thought of it like, like my media commentator head on it or whatever, I would have a different position and like, okay, leave Twitter or principal this in the next day. But I think of it more from the perspective of an organizer or an activist or an advocate. And I think of what I've been able to do with Twitter uh, 
just in terms of actual bail reform, criminal justice issues, winning cases, getting, you know, people out of jail. It's just, it's um, it's incomparable with like what I've tangibly, tangibly been able to do. And so for me, I guess I'm like, Elon, Elon Musk to me is um, a billionaire white supremacist fool. And that is pretty much what the police are and everybody else that I take on in life, right? In court and all these different ways. So in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm not going to see Twitter. Twitter has been such a, a successful avenue for, you know, activists and grassroots movements. I'm like, I'm not going to seed the force because, you know, they've got one big figurehead doing bullshit. That being said, if he kicks me off, he kicks me off. I hope I hope that don't happen. I will be sick. But um, nonetheless, I'm I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to keep tweeting. I'm going to keep talking shit. And he didn't get me up in the sweep. You know, I... So, you know, that's yeah. where I'm at. Yeah, it's it's like I, I there's so much that I hate about Twitter, too. I agree. Uh, it, it's it's a miserable app. People are terrible on there, but it is really an important utility. Like when you think about in in countries like um, really conservative areas in the world, like this is how they've been able to create LGBTQ plus movements in, you know, countries yeah. where that's criminalized and how they stage, you know, protests and whatnot. Um, it's been a vital tool. So to have that go away all because of this arrogant billionaire, it's sad. And really, it scares me because like what's stopping another billionaire from buying a different platform and doing the same thing? Like what happens Nothing. if Jeff Bezos wants to buy YouTube? We're all fucked. We, we, we're, we can't control that. Um, so it's just it, it's it sucks. Like capitalism is stupid. Uh, like this is just, <laughs> You shouldn't have that much wealth. Like it, it's insane to me. Good TED talk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. At the very least, I feel like I feel like Bezos is is, is a better villain. Like he's yeah. Bezos seems to genuinely not give a fuck about what we're talking about. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. Bezos is what people think. Like you know, you have all this money. Why do you give a fuck? Bezos feels like I have all this money. I sure don't give a fuck. Whereas mm -hmm. Elon Musk is like, I could care about nothing more <laughs> than what you little than what y'all are saying yeah. about me. That's but that's so true because he actually lives like the Lex Luthor life, you know, like yeah, he has these like exactly. fuck off mansion boats. He's got like all these supermodels that are with him all the time. He does all these like new invented drugs that he asks for. He's like, I want to have cocaine, but it's good for me. Healthy cocaine, please. And like, here you go. <laughs> like all the, all, all the shit that like you expect people to do if they had unlimited money. Instead, Elon Musk is like, I want to be uh, like Reddit popular all the time. I'm, I'm like, I'm the divorce dad reply guy for the fucking white supremacists now. <laughs> <laughs> I want the dank maymays to pop off, but I don't want to yeah, make them the myself. Oh, my There's an NBC News article that talks about high-profile journalists being suspended. I'm I'm name searching you, Matt, if it can load. All right. Uh, yep, I'm, you're I'm, in I'm, here. I'm getting like press requests from tons of outlets. Matt Binder of Matt. Oh Shavu. yeah, ride the train, Matt. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> It, you, you have to throw in there, Matt. It happened when I was on the leftist mafia, which I am on every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. PST. <laughs> Maybe, you the, you know, the rising tide viewers, lifts all boats. That's how, that's how valuable you are right now. Your internet currency. All of us are exploiting you simultaneously. Buy Matt Bender stock now. Yep. <laughs> it's rising. <laughs> it's a great long-term investment. Better than Tesla. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> True. Oh, Matt, do you know about that? So he sold, what, $3 billion worth of shares? And what is Tesla at now? Like, he's lost all the gains he made this year, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, you know. <laughs> they clip, hold on, they, I love this, Matt. They clipped you just with... Hey, Hello. I'm, I'm bad, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best response, Matt. Honestly, who is your therapist? And do they do video conference? <laughs> <Can> I... <laughs> yes. I, I need them. Wow, it, it's just, this is so surreal. Like it's I can't especially all the people who were banned. Like none of these people violated yeah. the TOS. None of them. Like I know we've talked about this, but it's still, like, what a petty piece of shit Elon Musk is. I can't get over it. It's just I, an abuse I, of power. Yeah, I would understand. You. I would. I honestly, I would respect it more if you would just be a fucking dictator. Just be honest about it. Like I've said yeah. that from the very beginning. You clearly took over the app for a particular purpose. You are sick of certain. You you cannot stand 
this entire segment of the internet of the population. You took mm -hmm. over the app because you're sick of fucking hearing us and you feel like we have too much power on this app. And now you're around the app bullying and taking people off. And that's what it that's what it is. Let that be what it is. Say what the fuck it is. The problem I have is, you know, putting out all these pre tax, all these pretenses, all this bullshit, all these fake ass, you know, um thinly veiled arguments about free speech and blah 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 blah. Why you actively contradict all of that and then you fucking ban people and stuff because you a bitch for real. Like it's real, some real Mm -hmm. Some real sugar pussy behavior. I really don't know another way to say it. It's really just really crazy. <laughs> it's really wild. <laughs> like, it is simply free speech for thee. No, wait. Free speech for me, but not for thee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And it's nuts. And also, he's like picking the. He's honestly just kind of driving up the competition to roast him. You know what I mean? Because it's like if the entire fucking Twitter, everyone's shitting on you, bro. Everybody. Everybody. He made himself the main character. People, exactly. Mm -hmm. People who don't even normally think of you. Yeah. Exactly. So Isn't now you, what you right? wanted everyone yeah. to talk about you. You got it. And because, yeah. and if you start picking and cherry picking who you're gonna block for it, now people say, oh. That's who did it. To, that's who did it. The baddest. Oh, oh, I wasn't. I gotta go harder next time. Cause mm -hmm. that, that's what I heard. Like in my mind, I heard Matt got suspended, and I was like, and I took that personally. <laughs> like that's, what, <laughs> that's that's how I feel about that. I'm like, oh, okay. So we gotta be on your ass. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and whatever. Like I know he's a hypocrite now, but remember when he said he was gonna be super transparent and put the entire Twitter algorithm on GitHub, so that way you can see the way that they make these decisions and why they're banning people and it's just everything that he said he's doing the opposite but the right is super ecstatic because like their racist buddies get to come back and now they can uh do polls saying should i say the n-word or not like baked alaska is doing it's just yeah it's he ridiculous. said back in april that i hope that even my worst critics remain on twitter because that is what free speech means wow that aged like milk I tweeted that like that's what he said back in april <laughs> God. Milk. <laughs> he's such a piece of shit what a terrible like, I, embarrassing I don't know about this but if you go to elon musk dot today that's uh the url again elon musk dot today it's a collection of every single thing he's ever lied about and how many days have passed Ooh. since he lied about it oh. and as you might imagine there is a fuck ton it is a, a treasure trove of all of his lies it's all it's all got sources links when he stated the lie and when how he hasn't followed through on it everything from like he's going to suck co2 out of the atmosphere to fuel his rockets no that like <laughs> never happened <laughs> shit like that <laughs> this is a great resource thank you yeah this is yeah. really good yeah. of course y'all are the real journalists I, i'm just a clown on the internet mood yeah yeah hey. there's gotta be a uh Something like it was 10 years ago that he said that in 10 years they'd put a human being on Mars. That's that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's this fun. is a giant page. Holy shit. Look, he was supposed to have a colony on Mars by this point, I think. Look, he was mm. playing the game Surviving Mars, got a little too into it. <laughs> that's all that happened there, okay? <laughs> that's so true. All right, well... I can change the topic if y'all want. Yes. We have a ton of sure. questions. So. Um, okay. Uh, so people are asking about, um, do you think Trump is even going to make it to the primaries? He seems so deflated, the hopefully I'm your favorite president statements, et cetera, et cetera, that he just knows he doesn't have a grip on the Republican Party anymore. I, I think, think he will make it as long as he is legally able to make it. <laughs> <laughs> right absolutely he's yeah and then he'll go even if he goes down he will somehow find a way to blame you know a rig system i don't know something um but i tend to think he's actually once he starts talking and there's an actual uh fight between him and desantis assuming desantis is running um trump has more stronger charisma than desantis does and i think that is why he's been around this long he is essentially a right-wing comedian I mean, he he has the ability to, to perform in a way that no one else on that side does. So even though DeSantis right now leading in all these polls, I covered this today, doing very well, um, and it's looking like all the all the momentum is with DeSantis, that can easily change once there's actual you know an actual fight between the two happening and Trump you know, I assume would pull out something better than whatever he called him last time, Ron De Sanctimonious. <laughs> The absolute worst <laughs> name he's used for anybody. <laughs> like, the there's so many better options hilarious. there. I love that. <laughs> but um, Hassan actually has a great, like, he, he says that Trump should call him Rhonda. Like, Rhonda mm. in, from, from Florida, which I think is oh, brilliant. Like, yeah, call yeah. him Rhonda. Like, just, you know, demasculate him. 
yeah, and you know, her side loves they'll love the homophobia. They'll definitely lean into that. That'll that'll work for them. Mm-hmm. You know, I I agree, David. I I think the thing about Trump, I think at a at a certain point, I I thought there was a chance Trump would be would deflate maybe because originally I don't think Trump ever when he first ever ran for president I don't think he intended to be president or thought he would make it as far as he did I think he was a issue candidate or whatever I think he was surprised to see his bullshit galvanize people the way it did but I think did y'all watch House of Dragons not y'all, yet y'all watch I did Sorry. I, did. Oh, I watched when that's old a, that's boy a great I'm not gonna say that was great a, okay when old boy gets crowned um um even though he was like I should not be I should not be. No way. Oh, I man. am depraved. But then the minute they actually crown him, he's like, "Woo!" This is but the sword. I'm like, I'm fucking with this. I think that's <laughs> what happened. Yeah, I think that's what happened yeah. with Trump. And it was very clear to me. I think when I really recognized, like, oh, he really genuinely. It's not just the fact that he was able to do it, and he he realizes he could keep it going. But once he fucking lost. And he wouldn't accept it, and he kept doing the bullshit. And so that's when I realized, oh, okay, this isn't just them. You know, it happened to work for you, and now they're pushing you. No, no, he is genuinely um, addicted to the attention. And I think David's probably right. I recently been contending with that point because I am of the I'm of the camp that you know they should be behind DeSantis, and DeSantis is going to be their pick or whatever. Um, who I think is a much more dangerous character for a number of different reasons. But um, my daddy was you know saying to me when he told me he's like, trust me, don't fucking count Trump. Trump out, these people, how they feel about him and that charisma and this, this, and the next. And I think it is entirely possible that if he makes it, if he actually makes it um, there, which I think probably will, to go toe-to-toe with DeSantis, I could see, I could see um, Republicans getting re-galvanized around Trump and his bullshit over, over DeSantis. But I do think if they're actually smart, it would be bad for us. But I think if they actually want the true evil that they want to see happen, I think they should go with their boy DeSantis. Mm -hmm. I don't want He also has a better shot at at beating Biden. I mean, exactly. there's recent polling on that, but even apart from that, DeSantis has essentially a clean slate nationally to work with. Like people in Florida, of course, know who he is, but outside of that, unless you're following politics, you don't really know who DeSantis is. So he's the ability to kind of the fact that he frame got the message about, around uh, who he is. Meanwhile, Trump, people already have a built-in feeling about Trump and they're not gonna, like, they're likely not gonna change either way. So Trump, I think has zero shot at winning again. Um, DeSantis absolutely could win if he is the nominee. I think so too. Uh, I just kind of feel though that like if you're at the point where you're fleecing what remains of your loyalists for NFTs, I mean, Trump selling NFTs to me kind of feels as if he's trying to get that demographic of like old, old people who like think they're they're, like grandchildren will love the fact that they got into crypto somehow. Like, look, I got you that thing you keep talking about. It's an NFT. I got the blockchain. And it's like, (laughs) Grandma, what the fuck? You spent $100 on this, you know? I, I, I don't know that it doesn't like, I have you seen how his own fans are like responding? Like conservative people, like the Hodge twins and like other big media personalities, they're like, "What the fuck? Why are you like slinging NFTs? This is not like presidential. It, it's like it's really sad." That's hilarious. Yeah, but th- their memories are so short. Like, yeah, true. <laughs> I'm sure true. they've complained about him before about other shit, and then they just move on. Um, so, you know, that isn't to say that Trump, you know, is definitely going to be the nominee. I just think that he still has a a better shot than some people are are thinking, um, based on some of the recent polling. Um, with that in you mind, are in NBC News, Matt Binder, I think. Oh, there you yeah. go. I told you. Yeah, you are, you are. On, I've got the article here. Twitter suspends several high-profile journalists Thursday evening who have been covering the company and Elon Musk. The suspension come a day after Twitter changes its policies around the accounts that track private jets, including one owned by Elon. The accounts of Ryan Mack at the New York Times, Donnie O'Sullivan of CNN, Drew Harwell of the Washington Post, Matt Binder of Mashable. Hell Yeah. Nick Lee of The Intercept, and independent journalists Aaron Rupar, Keith Olbermann, Tony Webster, holy shit, were all suspended on Thursday evening, including Rastodon. That's nuts. Jesus. Congrats. When you're on television, Bender, you should bring up, like, a lot of the shit you've been discussing with, like, the mm-hmm. like Nexium and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And just, you yes. know, like, start, <laughs> yes. start hammering on some yeah. of these stories that no one's covering. Um, Let me show you yeah, the crypto, even, even like, whatever. Too. Just bring it all yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, trust yeah. me. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I just got to build up all these uh, other platforms so people know to uh, read my shit, you know? Uh, and your patron as well. <laughs> yes, patreon.com slash Matt Binder. A few people have subscribed for sure. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, yeah, um, just follow me everywhere so I can build. Because listen, if I had... Um, YouTube is basically the closest thing I have to to the following I had on Twitter. I have like about 26,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's still only like 25% of what I had on Twitter. So 
just make it so I don't miss Twitter at all. <laughs> even if he even if he brings me back, even if he decides to reverse his decision on all these accounts, make it so I'm like, eh, just another just another platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He hasn't tweeted about this yet, which is very uncharacteristic. That's because he did it directly, I bet. <laughs> He's guilty. I think this is this is also I think should be a lesson to us all to myself included to not invest only in one platform and I think too mm. much of us made that mistake and we're still making that a mistake even in the conversation we're having like where are we all going to go the one place <laughs> have multiple fucking social media yeah. accounts my guys like we we need to there's no reason why I have to make myself do this too like you post it on Twitter go post it on Instagram but go post it on TikTok or whatever but build the others because we we can't we can't be taken out like this like mm. diversify can't just let folks people one file swoop us exactly exactly Exactly. We can't have this 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 monopoly, this the social media monopoly we've got going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone is tweeting about you, Matt. All right. Well, I you wish I could it? see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so fun. <laughs> it's um, weird because it's like I could oh, I just got a message on my account uh that says, hold on. Oh I just uh it says your account is permanently suspended. After careful review, we determined your account broke the Twitter rules. Your account is permanently in read-only mode, which means you can't tweet, retweet, or like content. You won't be able to create new accounts. If you think we got this wrong, <laughs> you can submit an appeal. Y'all should jump him. I mean, you ever. should try anyways. <laughs> yeah, obviously. You got it. <laughs> Y'all gotta jump in. Permanently yeah, suspended. I, listen, wow. I, I totally believe I totally believe that uh, Elon Musk has the right to uh, run his little, uh, you know, his little platform, however he'd like. But if you post rules, and those are the rules that tell people what they need to do, and then those people follow those rules, I mean, you gotta at least introduce the new rules and say from this point on. So whatever I did that broke the rules, please. I will uh, I will uh, immediately rectify the issue unless it's no longer talking about you, which then that's something I can't rectify. That's then then just just fuck my account completely. I'm not coming back. <laughs> you can use a Hasn't synonym Twitter for Twitter historically Elon? told you why your band is like like when you get suspended that they normally say I, what I, tweets. I, I, I always see people. I always see people for years get that the email saying this tweet broke the yeah. account and broke the rules. Um, let me know, like, delete this account and you will be able to tweet again. I mean, delete this tweet and you'll be able to tweet again. I never received one of those in the entire time I've had been on, I've been on Twitter since 2008. Mm-hmm. I've never once received a, uh, a infringement, a policy break, a temporary suspension, a permanent suspension, a any suspension. None of my tweets ever caused any issues. Um, cause I've always just followed the rules. It's very, you know, it's for me, it's very simple. Cause I just tweet about the news and sarcastically, uh, knock people when I think they're wrong. I don't ever bring up people's personal shit. Um, the funny thing is literally, uh, in the t- past couple of days, I've had this right winger in my DMS threatening to, uh, threaten to, uh, dox where my children go to school. Uh, by the way, wow. uh, I don't I don't ever go on record with that because I just find the best way to handle that shit is just to ignore it, honestly. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to bring it up now in terms of like how ironic it is that I literally had someone threatening my three and seven year old and uh, I get I get bent. Listen, if someone did something horrible to Elon Musk's kid, that's terrible. I don't want anything to happen to anyone's children. I don't care how rich you are. Mm-hmm. The kids are completely innocent, please. I mean, yeah. oh, if yeah. anyone thought I was I mean, that's just uh, no one could possibly thought that from anything I was saying. I just thought Elon Musk was being hypocritical with blaming this 20 year old kid, Jack Sweeney, for just making an account that Elon Musk previously said was fine. Um, I mean, it's just ridiculous. That's what I was commentating on. Uh, you know, that that's that simple, honestly. <sighs> it's so fucked up. Um, I mean, it's just ridiculous. That's what I was commentating on. Uh, well, you know, that, that, um, simple, to make honestly. this, I guess, really awkward, because I'm not good at pivoting or transitions. Um, <sighs> speaking so of bands, um, what mean, about... Right wingers trying to ban TikTok apparently. While we're on the topic of banning, I didn't know that was a thing. Are they trying? Are they trying to ban the app entirely, or trying to like censor it, or? I believe the app is. Someone in Congress is trying to ban the app 
from United States citizens because it's okay if American companies track your data, but not if Chinese companies track your data. Something like oh, that. okay. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. oligarchs are oligarchs, billionaires are billionaires. Yep. <laughs> At the end of the oh. day. <laughs> somebody somebody on Twitter put it perfectly. Let me let me give them the, the credit for the sentiment because they're correct and I'm pretty much gonna, gonna paraphrase it because it, it is what it is. Hold on. Um But I think up oh, bang. Olivia Juliana said, um, TikTok is where the overwhelming majority of young people get their information and political updates. This TikTok ban has nothing to do with privacy and everything to do with narrative control. If privacy was really a problem, we'd talk about Facebook having a monopoly. To me, that's all there is. Yeah, like that. She I can't say it better. I love her. She, I love her Twitter. She's such a great person. Yeah, from what I've too. seen. Uh, Matt, this question's for you. If you if you have a moment to answer, if not, I can go to a different question for no, now. Go ahead. Okay. So it says, uh, please ask Matt to discuss his impromptu interview with the young Republicans from Tuesday. Oh, oh my God, question. that was fantastic. Yes, that was. If I, you have a question, do that. It, it's very good viewing. Okay, so hmm. I had on Michael Edison Hayden and Hannah Gaze from the Southern Poverty Law Center on, um, on on Tuesday night on my show Doomed at youtube.com slash Matt Binder. Go there and subscribe. And <coughs> excuse me. And I had them on because they recently released a piece for uh, SPLC's uh, Hate Watch, uh, you know, their, the uh, SPLC's like news website um, that basically ran down their personal experience attending the um, New York Young Republican Club's annual gala. Now, you might have heard about this event if, you know, if you weren't paying attention to SPLC's very specific, like intricate reporting about very specific, maybe lesser known white supremacists. But you might have heard of it because it's the event where Marjorie Taylor Greene was speaking and she said uh, that if she was actually involved with planning the insurrection attempt on January 6th, they would have been armed. Mm -hmm. She said that at this event. And then um, this is also an event where the big award of the night was given to Bumble Jack Posobiec, uh, the Pizzagate uh, promoter and a uh, friend of many white supremacists who has lied about his entire career. He's never worked for any of the mainstream news outlets he claims to have worked for. Um, and I just had them on to talk about that. And I guess because they retweeted it and a lot of, you know, the people who were attending were sort of monitoring what they were saying about it. Um, they were in the live chat. Uh, Ashley St. Clair, uh, Kashim, the guy who used to work for Breitbart UK, who runs like the National Pulse now. Uh, I forget his name. Um, a few other people. And I was telling them, hey, if you want to if you want to talk to us right now, I'm happy to talk with you guys. I'll bring you guys on the feed. Uh, just call in or DM me your Skype names. And none of them wanted to, except for Lucian Wintrich, who is a, a uh, like a, a, a board member of the New York City Republican uh, Young Republican Club, the New York Young Republican Club. And uh, this guy, Nathan, I believe his name, who is a VP, uh, who's the VP of the New York Young Republican Club. And so they called in, we spoke with them, and we went at it. Like, it was it was crazy. It was, like, very heated. It was, uh, they wouldn't answer a lot of the questions uh, directly. I had a very specific question for them. Um, you know, uh, uh, Michael of SPLC asked them, you know, why was uh, Peter Brimlow of VDARE, the white supremacist site, the guy who runs that site, why was he there? And they said, you know, did you, they, he asked, did you invite him? And they're like, no, no, no. He paid for a ticket just like everybody else. Uh, we can't control that. So I said, OK, let's, you know, and I don't think Michael believed them. But I, I said, OK, let's take it from there. Let's say that he did pay for a ticket. He paid the $400 per ticket early bird fee or the $800 ticket for the regular fee or the VIP, whatever he paid. He paid to go. And you guys let anyone who pay for a ticket go. I, that's fine. That's how you want to run your shit. That's fine. But can you answer me this? What do you think some what, why do you think someone like Peter Brimlow wanted to go to your event? What what he made a, a investment into attending this event. He lives in West Virginia. He had to travel to get there. He's laid down hundreds of dollars to go in. What do you think someone like him gets out of that investment? What do you think he was hoping to get out of this? They couldn't answer the question. They just were they they tried to get away from it as much as possible. I mean, it's a very simple question to answer. 
uh, and they just couldn't handle it. It was just it was just wild to see. It was just over the top. I don't think explaining it does it justice because you know Michael was really going at them hard. Um, and I sort so of have a different people, by the way. You, it was What's like that? not just him. It, you, you both, all of you, cycled through so many people. It wasn't just Peter Brimlow. It was like Peter Brimlow. Oh, I mean, like a... Marjorie Taylor Greene was there. Uh, Jack Pasevic was there. Why did you give Jack Pasevic an award? And they're like, oh, we give many people awards. Like, what is the oh, criteria? They, they were, that? Why they, would you give were, him an they award? Were, like, <laughs> there were members of that far right Germany party who was and who there. And the, that party in Germany that just tried to do a coup that was all over the news yeah. that they arrested a bunch of their members because they were about to coup the uh, government of Germany, and they were there. I mean, it, 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 it was, very it was the Davos about of fascism. They... That's that's what yeah. I called it. I was like that that whole meeting. You had all these people like Donald Trump Jr. directly connected to like you know the previous presidents of the United States, mixed with all of these fucking international fascists and old timey people like white supremacists from back. Who talks about Peter Brimlow? Right? That's not a household name. No one's like, oh yes, Peter Brimlow. Yes, uh, the neo Nazi. No, it's like Peter Brimlow. Who the fuck is that? And and they were all meeting together in the same place at the same time and then playing dumb. And also a point, because Michael Hayden was there. They got kicked out, actually. And they didn't even pretend. Like, I made a joke when I was introducing them, like, uh, check out Special Agent Hayden and Gaze, who infiltrated the New York City Young Republican event. And they used that later on. Like, oh, why did they lie about who they were? If they listened to the thing from the beginning, and also in their reporting, the actual written piece they explain, Michael and Hannah didn't lie about who they were. They used their real names. They just the New York City Young Republican Club, New York Young Republican Club didn't do any due diligence to check out who these people were before letting them in. They paid for their tickets when they were there. They didn't lie about who they were. They spoke to people. And when asked who they were, they truthfully. And that's what reporters do. If you're asked who you are, you legitimately say, I'm so and so from this outlet. And that's what they did. I mean, that's how they eventually got kicked out because they were being truthful with who they were. Uh, no one like tracked them down like via facial recognition and figured out who they were. They got outed because they were telling people who they were and people started to go to like the people in charge saying, hey, so-and-so is here. They just told me they're here. I mean, um, oh, another major thing, like the op-ed section of Newsweek was there and the op-ed editor, uh, Josh or Hammer or whatever his name is, I can't remember, when uh, Michael started talking to him, Michael said, oh, what do you think about Peter Brimlow being here? And this guy, he's the op-ed editor of Newsweek, goes, oh, Peter's here? Where is he? I want to say hello. And then Michael started asking him more questions about it. And then he goes, wait, who are you? And then he says, oh, I'm Michael Hayden from uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. And then he goes, oh, I, oh, I, I don't want to talk with you anymore. And he pretended not to care about uh, Peter Brimlow anymore. This is the editor of Newsweek. If you're wondering why the op-ed section of Newsweek looks the way it does now, because this is the guy accepting the pieces for Newsweek. Wow. Um, Looking up to a white supremacist, a white nationalist. I to, uh, I didn't know that that Lucian guy that you were talking to uh, got fired from Drudge for that article about, uh, or uh, maybe that's not why he got fired, but he had an no, article. No, he got fired how... from, uh, I, I don't know about Drudge, but Lucian Wintrich, Wintrich the guy who came on the, the, the show, uh, one of the two guys, he got fired from Gateway Pundit. This is what was reported at the time. Oh, that's right. He got fired right. from Gateway Pundit. Imagine getting fired from Gateway Pundit for something. But he got fired from <laughs> Gateway Pundit for doing a podcast with Nick Fuentes. Oh, I thought it I was mean, for the article about how Antifa, like super soldiers, are going to behead white people. <laughs> I mean, maybe that was one of it too. Maybe the, the article. I think well, that's what Michael right said. That's what Michael like, said. Antifa on, super soldiers are going to behead white parents or something like that. <laughs> that's what. That's what. That's what Michael uh, uh, said on the uh, the podcast. But then when I looked it up, there was someone else who sourced the Nick Fuentes podcast episode that he did as the reason. So maybe it was both. Maybe it was none. Uh, you know. But the point is, the guys d did did both of those two things. And then for some reason got fired from, from uh, I mean, to me, the big deal is that he got fired from Gateway Pundit. I mean, if Gateway Pundit didn't fire him, that still would have, who cares? The point is he did that fake story about uh, Antifa super soldiers beheading parents and then also doing a podcast with Nick Fuentes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's go a little bit... Um... Not so much a specific topic, but maybe more of an opinion piece of how we feel about things. So um, this question is, as leftist content consumers, what can we do now that we're convinced socialism isn't a bad thing and is pretty based, actually? From everyone's perspective, how do we best organize as lefty content listeners? 
as listeners, I think, I mean, start with your workplace. If like, if you're, I don't know, I think unions are like an important piece of, of power, uh, because we have very little power individually, but collectively, uh, if you're able to work with your, your own workplace to try and have a voice in that workplace, um, I would say start there. I know it's, you know, it's not easy to start that, but there are resources to help with that. Uh, I, that's kind of where my mind goes. Uh, if you have the time, you know, help on political campaigns, ones that you really care about, you think, even if they're not going to win, maybe get these, uh, these opinions out there, these, these positions out there and, and trying to reach people. That's another way. It also just helps with experience and kind of, um, you know, you meet people in your own, in that same mindset and you can grow from there. So there's, there's opportunities, I think, within the workplace and within, you know, politics. Um, I was going to quickly say, uh, and shout out to Robert Evans. If you uh, don't already know, he's got a lot of really good podcasts about organizing. Um, he, he lays it out. He's like, there's a whole bunch of ways you can get involved, get involved in your local community. Start with things like look for organizations, say food, not bombs or pro LGBTQ plus organizations, or just organizations in general that align with some of your politics. So you can get directly involved and then start working from there. Uh, then exactly what David said, he's like, that's one uh, aspect of it. Where do you spend the majority of your day in your workplace? So if your workplace isn't organized, try to get your workplace organized go to more perfect union at youtube.com slash more perfect union they have direct instructions on how to organize and uh, unionize safely because it is something that can risk you getting fired so that's obviously a really big concern and also like david said when it comes to elections don't just think about the sexy ones the ones that are like the president the prime minister what actually affects your life way more than anything and i found so much more rewarding is canvassing and volunteering for your local elections mm -hmm. who's your mayor most people don't even know sometimes who the mayor of their city is who's on your council who, like these are the people who determine determine the police budget, the police priorities. You have control over that. And the show up, like the turnout for local elections is abysmal. In some major cities, it's like 20%. In mine, it was like 36 to 37%. So like, it's very easy to sway those elections and actually have like a big impact that'll change your, your community. Oh, Musk just said, Musk just commented. Oh, saying, shit. Saying uh, some, uh, someone, uh, that guy that he constantly, um, uh, responds to um, Mike Solana tweeted uh, so far I've been able to confirm about half the accounts suspended posted links to the jet tracker thing in violation of the new doxing policy unclear about the rest but it's safe to say the rule is for real and Musk replies same doxing rules apply to journalists as, as to everyone else I but never tweeted that link <laughs> everyone Not comment to everyone he said himself to Musk right that now. was fine but everyone yeah. comment to Musk right now. I never, I never fucking sent yeah, that I'll, link to anybody. I'll, I never posted I'll, 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 it. Solidarity. I'll, I'll risk the. I'll risk what the. A, what a fucking piece of shit. I never <laughs> posted that link. I mean, that's a bullshit policy to begin with. But I never even broke that policy. Never posted the link. I replied with Matt Binder. Never posted the link. Yeah, I'm posting that too. And by the way, like. If you had, why wouldn't they show you the tweet, the offending tweet that caused the ban the suspension? Like, you can't, at least under, I mean, you can, because he's Elon Musk, but <laughs> the way it was supposed to work, or the way it did work, is if you got suspended, you knew, you at least knew why, um, to just do this nonchalantly and, like, clearly have no basis for it. It's just fucking disgusting. Elon being Elon. Yeah. Because the policy is y'all have Elon Musk fucked up. That's the policy. That's the policy you <laughs> violated. <laughs> you have him below the pass all the way fucked up, Matt. That's what happened. <laughs> like, and they about to ban Mike ass too and Lance ass. <laughs> and we're just comment on that post. <laughs> I was, like, I was he like, said, here's oh. the new list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone is sharing the notorious tweet from Elon Musk where uh, the one that David pointed out where he's like, I hope even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that is what free speech means. Motherfucker, what happened to that? I mean, holy shit. To, to say that he did a 180 is the understatement of the century. Like, he is the biggest, most pettiest tyrant ever. I mean, I would believe it's a 180 if I actually believed that what he said the first time was actually truthful. That's a great but point. But I, I think it was always just a show. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's a really exactly. great point. Exactly, Blair, that's the co cosign. Yeah. That's it. I've been sad. They, like, they be I, lying. If you take him at face value, yeah, totally. But mm -hmm. when has he ever been honest? Like, just They're look at honest. his history. This is I one told of the most honest man out there. 
The whole free speech thing in general is some is some bullshit. That's that's some bullshit. It ain't got nothing to do with free speech. It never has been. It is a pretense, and we gotta stop engaging them on the merits. I keep saying that mm-hmm. shit. It is a pretense. That's why we all around here like, oh my god, look at look at them not doing the things they said <laughs> they said they do. What you said you cared. <laughs> They don't care. I, I told y'all in episode one, their only politics is fuck you. That's their, that is their <laughs> so political true. ideology. Fuck you. Y'all agree? Fuck them? It's fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Like, whatever they need to do to arrive and fuck them, they're going to get there. Yes. Like, we need to reorient ourselves to that absolutely undeniable fact. Yes. Yes. Well, I already know. Let me tell you, y'all going to wake up to y'all's Twitter's gone. <laughs> but I'm gonna pour one out for y'all when y'all come. <laughs> Good. Uh, honestly, I like I don't want to lose my Twitter account, but I've got to say my mental health would probably improve at least like sixty five percent if I didn't have Twitter. If I'm being perfectly honest, Twitter is such probably, a cesspool. It is. You just you see everything on Twitter. Like the things that people won't call me on YouTube, they'll call me on Twitter. They've got balls on Twitter. Mm-hmm. They talk. No one. There's nowhere in the internet I get talked greasier about than YouTube comments. And that's really? probably because I was on the hill. But y- y- listen. Oh, the, the hill. YouTube yeah. Comment? That's got to oh, be my brutal. God. Y'all don't know disrespect. So <laughs> y'all see the YouTube comments about me. You don't know. Oh, man. This respect okay maybe in there talking about me like my my mother called me in a heated in a heated rage one day i was like oh no mama <laughs> you, you can they don't love your daughter there love does not live there don't <laughs> don't don't scroll mommy don't scroll like my mommy calls me like why would they say that about you i don't even understand why they would oh. say that <laughs> uh, me and my, my mommy be talking the same shit about me like, like <laughs> My mom may be the same one. Like, why do they let this bitch on TV? They don't vet. Meanwhile, they said that on YouTube. And my mommy's like, whose child? Whose child are they talking about? Not my child. <laughs> <laughs> it's always sad when moms discover, like, the haters of their children. Like, I don't remember what it was, but my mom looked at my YouTube comment section a long time ago. It was, like, years ago. And I remember she, like, sent me a message on Facebook. She's like, did you see what this person said about you? Like, mom, it's fine. Like, they're <laughs> It's YouTube. It doesn't. It, it's totally okay. Just don't read it. Don't look at the comments. It's See, fine. at least your mommy nice. Comments? My mommy oh. Loki. My mommy Loki uh, thinks I'm obnoxious. Um, she thinks I'm just like my daddy. So like, she's like on my team. Like, she want to be on my team because she's my mama. But she also be sick of my shit. So what <laughs> she'll do? She knows. She'd be like. She's like, geez, you just think you just, oh, you just think you all. <laughs> and then my mother, when I realized that my mommy was a, was a toxic woman that needed to be reined in, was this woman knows I don't read the YouTube comments. She knows I don't read the YouTube comments. Y'all believe my mother sat down like she was reading the newspaper and sent me a two-minute audio note just reading all <gasps> the shit talking. Just, no, she <laughs> did just, Yes! Just like... <laughs> oh, like yeah, she tricked me too. That's how she tricked me. That's how she tricked me. Cause she don't know. That's how she tricked me. She's so fucked up. She came in the call and she was like, "Yeah, yeah, me." So they was actually being, you know, mostly positive. I saw a lot of positive comments about you. Proceeds to read only slander, only death, only <laughs> defamation. And she's like tickled. She's like, she's like, eh, eh, I, I always love when the racists call people racist. They said you're a racist. <laughs> she said, "I'm like." <laughs> She's the, that's so wrong. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you know what? I, I understand that not because I am on a mental health journey does it mean you are on one. <laughs> so like, I am gonna address you when I when I figure out. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this conversation now, Mama. Oh my <laughs> do god! You back. So, yeah, yeah. It's best to to just like not look at the comments. I I think that anyone who's getting in like who's new to like having a semi sort of platform rule number one is don't look at the comments you'll develop thicker skin but they will say some fucked up shit about you i saw blair she shared a comment uh and i got the same type of comment from a different person of one of them saying yeah Yeah. i I, man it's too bad that you weren't in the club uh during the club q shooting like i got that blair got that we both like i shared my my screenshot in your thread yep i saw that and i was like yeah i mean i've I was almost there. Like, you were close, buddy. Your wish almost happened, but fuck you. I'm still here. Right. Sorry. These people are (laughs) insane. I I remember, like, right after my dad died, somebody sent... I don't know if it was through email or a YouTube comment, but somebody was like, 
Uh, it's good that your dad is dead because he doesn't get to see his son be a sellout piece of shit or whatever. I'm like, you don't even know my dad. My dad was super proud of me. Fuck you. I influenced my dad's politics. Cool. Where is that even coming from? Like, they just try to, like, find the lowest, most, like, hurtful thing. But I feel like the, the, the bar is so high to get me to pay attention. Like, it, does, it doesn't even that. affect me. They're dickheads. They're dickheads. It's just this is it's really wild with the internet and, and the way people perceive social media visibility. Like I feel like they think like as you get followers or something, you start getting like you get ten grand or something every every thousand followers or something. Like even when we did this show, someone was like, someone commented to me and they were like, they're like you sure sold out quick. I was like, sold away the money. We sold out stream. Well, hold on, hold on. How are you? What, what, you talk, what you talking about? I'm streaming with five people for the free on Thursday. What you talking about? You sold out. I was like, what the fuck you mean sold out? Where my money? <laughs> like I was like, huh? Why? Where do y'all even? They, like they just come with slander. Like I'm like, damn. Wait. Yeah, it's called me a sellout. They like they they like, listen. They did mean that. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Can't I was like, can't can't talk to to some white people on a Thursday evening without immediately <laughs> you are a traitor. I was like, that's fucking crazy. That's so wild. Like, the best are mm. are the people that are fans of actual sellouts like Jimmy Dore, and then they criticize you for being a sellout. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yo, the dude you're that you're a fan of, he's the guy that bought the mansion, not me. Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> I don't have a fucking mansion. <laughs> like, I have student debt still. Saying. Come on. I'm saying me too. I still got 40 grand of student debt. Can't wait to uh, pay that off piece by piece. I have 95k. <laughs> it's going to be a <gasps> long so time. Uh yeah, so shout out to Ron uh Ronald C World on Twitter, clueless Ron. He sh- he shared uh one of my responses to Lauren Bobert. Like I, sometimes I'll just tweet at them I'm like, "Hey, remember when your husband was arrested at a bowling alley for exposing himself to a minor?" And like this random person, <laughs> unprovoked, I'm gonna came get in. off the call for a second, guys. I'll be back in a in a minute. Okay, yes. okay. Bye, Matt. Go do your interview. Yes. Yes. This random unprovoked I'm person sorry, came CNN in. Is calling again. He's too famous for us. Now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> God, we're gonna have to find oh, a new co-host. He's he's too big. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> But this this person who's a Jimmy Dore fan uh, responded to my random ass tweet to Lauren Bober and they're like, "Remember when you called Jimmy Doy a right winger and he's more left than you?" And they spelt it Jimmy Doy, which just makes it so <laughs> hilarious and kind of cute in a way. But it's just God, people. Twitter is terrible. Oh, right, this- uh, Elon Musk tweet update. By the way, he tweets, Ooh, nice. "I love Barbara Streisand." LOL. Go to fucking hell. I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking hate this guy. Yeah, 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 I hate fuck you. <laughs> what a fucking hell. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I can't, well, I can't with him. <laughs> no, I just, I hate when the people online try to bring you into, like, like, like beef. Like, they don't like some rat. First of all, I don't even have a database of commentators. Let me just know that. As y'all know, I don't know 99% of everybody. I only know who knows me. <laughs> Purely. I like, so then they would like, they don't like somebody or they decided you have some interaction or someone or this. They have this web of like what's acceptable, who's allowed to collaborate or who's supposed to be friends. And I'm just like, let me explain something and let me explain something good. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I'm not in it. Like, I think it is a waste of energy. Listen, I have thoughts. Mm-hmm. I have thoughts. On, I'm an opinionated bitch. So I have lots of thoughts on different commentators, different people, different that, 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 I think. But I think it is a waste of energy and space and attention and engagement for that to be what I'm engaged. I don't give a fuck mm-hmm. about what anybody else is saying on their platform. I am not busy trying to win some kind of purity test. From my perspective, in terms of the work that I do outside of, like, commentating and being media is an aspect of, you know, how I go about advocacy and blah, blah, blah. But overall, where I see my role and what I'm concerned about in terms of black liberation, I think it has always been a mistake to be engaged in an argument. If, if I read books, if I read uh, uh, Huey Newton, Stokely Carmichael, W.E.B. Du Bois, everybody at some point in time addresses their thought or beef or problem with some other black activist. And who gives a fuck? At the end of the day, like how I see it is under a certain level of umbrella. We're not going to agree on every motherfucking thing. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not my concern, regardless how I feel about it. It's not my concern to be worried about you unless I find you to be like a truly harmful motherfucker. And I'm going to speak about your ideology. But wasting time and energy when we barely 
really ever get space in the mainstream media at all or or, or attention or engagement to our post. Me wasting and taking that energy to go shit on such and such and this one and blah, blah, blah. And I don't like him. This I don't give a flying fuck. It's just not a useful time of energy. So don't get me involved in that bullshit because that's how I feel about that. For me, I am a person. I am consistent. You put me in the room with the with the right. You put me in the room with whomever. The liberals, the mods, the centrists. I say the same shit. I give it up the same way. I have the same agenda. And so I'm like, that's what I'm here for. I don't care about who is across from me and all of this next thing you running on with and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go where I need to go to get the fucking message out and say the same thing. But keep me out of your petty bullshit Mm because I don't got the fucking time for it. I'm busy trying to get people out of jail. Best. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it right there. Like mic drop. (laughs) People. I I hate when people try to uh, ascribe political ideologies to you. Like I'll see people like try to use like they'll call me a liberal or something on Twitter, like to try to be like to insult me. And it's like you don't yeah. even like you literally don't even watch my show, so you don't even know what my ideology is. Like I'm I'm explicitly yeah. anti capitalist. Like you don't you don't know what the fuck I believe in. So if you stopped watching yeah. like seven years ago when I started when I was like a sock down, like don't don't talk now. Like don't like, people are just yeah. they like to talk shit. That's that's like the end of it. Like they love and talking there's shit. No- there's no room for evolution or realism or recognition no. that like listen i can't stand centrism like i should on mm-hmm. like i have my issues with 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 liberals too and 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 moderates and centr- i can't i fucking hate it like and, and y'all know i'm not a very mince words type of person in general so i get that but at the end of the day i recognize that the majority of the people that are on the side of the camp that we can appeal to are not me mm-hmm. okay we're not we are not reflective we, the organizers and the activists and the truest of the left and stuff and whatever, we are not reflective of every fucking body. At the end of the day, the liberals and the centrists, it makes no sense that you could think it's okay for us to respond to white supremacists and debunk them and attack them who will never give a fuck about what we're talking about. But you think we should totally ignore any level of, you know, who is a liberal or who is it this? At the end of the day, we have to deal with those motherfuckers. I don't have to like it. I don't like it either. But at the end of the day, I have a, you have to try to move those people. That's the best you could fucking do. You- I didn't think about that. Blah, 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 blah. You have way of a better chance of doing that than with white supremacists. So it's like wanting to be in an echo chamber is harmful. Mm-hmm. Like that's just that's just that's just purely of like it just isn't re- it isn't reasonable. It isn't realistic. And something for me that I try to consider, I've always been somebody I don't like getting unfounded praise like i i don't believe i always say lance can tell you on my first interview with lance i'm like i don't think being a public defender is doing god's work i don't think anything like that y'all don't see me i don't call myself somebody's revolutionary nobody's activist (laughs) yeah i don't (laughs) but i don't i don't feel that way but i i feel like if people are paying attention to me i see it as a platform i feel a level of responsibility to make sure i'm actually saying something worth saying i'm espousing something i'm trying to tell y'all i'm trying to figure out how we could do something which is why i have a learning which is why i read why i say all these different things i don't have the energy in the space for us to just be um only only talking to other me's because that's not gonna do nothing for mm-hmm. us if i have i feel like i have all the answers in my house i feel like i have all these things that would be helpful if other people more people thought about this but i only tell my boy who agrees you know what's that gonna do <laughs> for again and at the end of the day you gotta recognize this no one starts nobody starts at their most radical and 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 political evolution is lifelong you're constantly learning it is a theory you are constantly uh evolving i always say to people i did not start a fucking abolitionist i even i start and i started as somebody far more radical than your average person and when it was first posed to me i was like you know because again we're all being educated in a society that educates us in the way of the bullshit you know educates us to be more on what is the status quo so we have to recognize that there are a lot of people that just don't fucking have the information i've never thought about it like that and they are not going to completely abandon their whole school of thought you know the first time we say something and they can't just be like well f- mm-hmm. you know i feel it don't, don't get me wrong mm-hmm. sometimes it's okay to be like fuck them fuck the centers fuck the water i, I Fuck them. I do feel you, but you gotta talk to them too. We can't mm-hmm. just be like, oh, that person's not a real leftist. How dare you call that leftist mafia? Why are you speaking that? <laughs> I'm like, because in my mind, I hear that, and I'm just like, at the end of the day, even if you think, if your mind, right, I see all the comments they say to me is like, you're the only one I think is real. Okay, so let's say all these these five white people are are are, are all liberals, right? Or you think they're more representative of the Dems and blah blah. blah. Are they not still the majority by comparison? You recognize that the five of those people definitely outrank. Like, I'm like, it's not, it's only me one. If that's just all the different view, these people all, everybody got a show and I don't. All these people have larger platforms, larger street and access. So they're talking to more people. Are they, 
is it not better for you to get a per get people in the room and be having those conversations? Isn't it better for us instead us to be infighting for us to actually have the discussions and share the different information that we didn't know and cross cross content like because we just can't know it all. We can't cover all the areas. Half the things y'all talk about, I'm like, I didn't hear about it. They didn't know. They didn't, <laughs> didn't know. And then people who watch for me, they get to hear that information they didn't know. And the people that watch for y'all that don't know the information, I would say they get to hear that information. And we do a much better job at at least trying to get mm -hmm. on some more moving to the left and some more united messaging instead of just fighting to say, yeah, I'm the wokest leftist in the room. This is why <laughs> I, I also don't normally talk about ideology on my channel. I, I, yeah. I tend to, I mean, I do think each person has a each of us have sort of a place in our audience and uh, like goals that we want to achieve and, and who are reaching for most of my content. I do try to make it as broad as possible because mm -hmm. I know discussing ideology, like immediately, like people don't care or it turns them off. And it, it just, it, it's not interesting for a lot of people. Whereas if mm -hmm. you talk about a news item in a way that maybe opens their minds to ideas they haven't thought of before, I think that is a better way to, to get to people than, okay. you know, discussing my ideology, what that means. It's, it, it's just, that's how I've always uh, always applied, like how I discuss news, and that's also, by the way, why it's I think it's important to, at least for me, to um, jump on you know various viral topics that are that are that are popping up, or like a clip of like you know the view or some shit where it seems dumb on the face of it, but if you introduce different ideas and thoughts into those discussions, that those people that you know would come upon come upon a clip like a viral clip, um, they wouldn't normally see something like that then you can it, you aren't just you know d discussing or or showcasing the clip for the sake of the clip you are bringing other information into that discussion and reaching people that normally would not be seeing your channel because you are discussing this trending topic that a lot of people are viewing so i think that that's always my goal is to try and reach as broad of an audience as possible that's why i have people that are like elderly that watch me that comment on a regular basis i have people that are young that comment so <laughs> i have sort of people all over the place and I, I think that's that should be a lot of our goals at least yeah. you know it can't always be. I know some of us are a little more focused on discussing, talking to to a leftist audience, and how we frame arguments and that kind of thing. But um, for me, it's just it's always been a, a broader message. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the way that I see it as well. It's like my goal is to move people as far as I can move them towards my position, towards the far left. But you can't do that by just like being in your face about it. You've got to be strategic, and I I do think that like trying to radicalize normies by like introducing a view clip for a while and bringing like a leftist twist to it i think that is important like in in the days when like when my show was popping off in 2017 during net neutrality um i i get comments all the time of people saying listen i was like i was not political or i was conservative and i just kept watching after net neutrality and now i'm a socialist or some people, you know, now I'm a communist Congrats. and they just like, and it's not like, like, I don't really talk about ideology. Like I'll introduce like anti-capitalist rhetoric from time to time if it's relevant or I'll talk about like anti-capitalism if I'm talking about billionaires, for example. But like uh, my goal is to just get them to have that spark to start like discovering their own political ideology. I just like point them in the direction. So you have to like know who your audience is and it's unrealistic to like always be beating up on liberals 100% of the time, which we all shit on liberals. We all love doing that because they are insufferable. But the liberals are the ones who I think we need to win over to bring to the left. And there right. has been liberals who have said like, yeah, I, I agree with you about this with the Democratic Party and how this has fucked up what they did. Um, and that's what that, like that's what our jobs are, I think, as political commentators, to the extent that like we have a grander message. That's at least like what what I feel my yeah. mission is: is radicalize these normies, get all of the Democratic Party loyalists to see that the Democratic Party is flawed. Opt for the more progressive candidates if you're going to vote. If you're going to vote vote um at all, make sure you participate in local elections. Support these progressive candidates because even though it makes a lot of sense to us, people don't realize it like they don't understand um politics the way that we see it like i went to a town hall back in 2018 and i had on a bernie sanders shirt and then this old lady who was signing everyone up she was like oh i love bernie sanders i voted for him in 2016 and i'm like hey that's great she's like yeah but i love pete Buttigieg now and i'm like see that's the person right there like that's the motherfucker who i'm trying to grab and wake up and shake them and you can't do it by saying oh pete Buttigieg is a piece of shit i fucking hate him like you can't you can't do that so you've got to say well like I, I forgot what i said but it was very like gentle like yeah but i don't like the way that he's taking money from wall street unlike bernie sanders and she was like yeah i mean i i didn't 
keep in touch with this lady. So I don't know if I changed her mind. She probably just, you know, thought, fuck you. But, you know, yeah. th that's the people who you really you want to pull over because I like I've seen some threads on Reddit with like, oh, yeah, you know, like uh, Mike convinced me I used to follow Steven Crowder and I saw his video debunking Steven Crowder. And now I, I don't I don't follow him. But like that's I don't know how many of those people you can win over. So realistically, liberals are the easiest, like they're the low hanging fruit. So go after liberals, try to convince as many as you possibly can. And, you know, to the extent that people think I'm a liberal because I try to radicalize the liberals and speak their language, that's fine. But like ultimately, at the end of the day, I I hide my power level. I fucking hate capitalism. I absolutely am anti-capitalist 100 percent. I think that uh, the workers should own the means of production uh, that should be seized violently. Um, but I'm not going to just come out and say that because people don't even know what the fuck socialism is in this country. So you can't like you have to meet people where they are. Right. You, you have to speak their language. And that's kind of like what I feel like my my job is. But you, you just said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you just said it. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say, I think my channel falls into like that gateway area because I think between all of the content that we create, I think I probably have some of the more neutral content because it, and it's interesting because um, I think I briefly talked about it with you, Lance, when we were on your show that I used to actually be very conservative um, up until probably around 2012, 2014 area. And then I just claimed I was a libertarian while I was figuring my shit out and where I actually like was and what I believed in. And one of the things that really made me lean left, like faster than anything ever, was all the research that had to be done for all the episodes that we created to look at these businesses. And what you realize is no one likes what these businesses are doing. And that's literally the reason why my content thrives and does what it does is because everyone hates this shit and they want to learn why are charities corrupt? Why is why are these cults here? Why do these MLMs and, and scams and shit, why are they all around? And when you dig into it, you start to realize that there's really one political party that really supports these things and puts laws in place to allow these things to happen. And then when you start to let yourself put the pieces together over a series of time, you go, holy shit, there's no way that I can't that I can be part of the right because they believe all of these things are OK. And I vehemently think that what these companies or nonprofits or whatever did are wrong. And I've also gotten those comments where people are like, oh, I used to be like centrist or whatever. And now I'm leaning so much farther left after watching your content. And I'm just like, me too. Honestly, <laughs> I had to learn through that process as well. And then when it came time to kind of um, hiring employees, when that was a whole thing, when I started to do that, and I was like, no, everyone needs healthcare. Everyone needs 401ks. Everyone, like, ev all of my employees know I bug them regularly when I see they haven't taken off time in a couple months. And I'm like, hey, do you need like a week off? Do you want to go away for a week? You should you should go relax. Do you have something to do? I can I can like send you something. Like what do you need help with? Let's let's let you take a break and refresh. And when I started going through like the laws and stuff to set things up, what's kind of funny is there was um a program that I wanted to set up for employees. It's called like um like a personal spending account essentially. It's something that I know exists in Canada. Doesn't exist in the US. And I tried to set that up. I contacted this company in Canada. And they take a look at my company. They'll go, oh, well, you're an American company. So it's not actually, this isn't a tax exempt benefit in the US. Um, this is something only like Canadian companies can really work with. And I was like, oh, so I can't work with you guys at all. And they were like, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, America is not compatible. They don't believe in this type of benefit for their employees. So I had to manually create it um, for my employees. And it's something where I take a nasty little tax hit on it every year, essentially, because it's counted as a taxable benefit. And I try to like kind of, mitigate that kind of tax cost with them by paying for it. And it just, it became so clear how easy as an employer in America, it would be to literally exploit the living shit out of my employees. And it was kind of horrifying mm -hmm. to, to see it firsthand to go, oh, I could write off like a G wagon, but the fact that I want to give my employees extra money so that they can like have childcare paid for or like be able to go to the movies or maybe be able to have their groceries, like, you know, extra groceries or whatever paid for is like in the house parties, whatever. Like, I don't care what you do in your personal life, but like, so they can actually enjoy life outside of work and that I couldn't do anything about that, but I could go buy like a G wagon or I could go buy a boat or any of these obscene things and call those tax write offs. And I just found that to be obscenely grotesque. And I was like, all right, listen here. Now as like a tiny business owner, I see a big difference and it gave me even more perspective when I'm looking at these companies because I know they have even more options and reach on how they could help people 
and they choose not to. And there's nothing that really motivated me more than kind of putting those pieces together and then being able to talk about it on a weekly basis. Like nothing shifted me over. And it's the subtle stuff that gets people, I think. If we're out yeah. there, yeah, socialism, people, it's such a polarized word. People don't even know what it means. People don't care what it means anymore. But if you're like, let's talk about what this company did. Let's look at this example. People go, you're right. That is fucked up. And I'm like, that's right. And let me tell you what else that might mean for you if you believe in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, everyone has this experience with like these, these, um, these tyrannical bosses, like the easiest conversation uh, about to, to like get into the doorway with someone if they're not necessarily super political is you talk about how we don't have democracy in the workplace they literally control our expression what we can wear where we have to be and we dedicate the majority of our days to these corporations i me personally <clears throat> i am very firmly obviously in what is my basic position in anything i am moving us to a radically different world in plain sight right like i'm an abolitionist i'm you know um and for me, it's not about speaking around that. It's about speaking in recognition of that in the sense that um, I will always acknowledge, and I think that always will will seed some, you know, um, grace in, in discussions with people. I always acknowledge that everything that I say and believe and espouse is radical by today's, you know, status quo or mm -hmm. that it will seem abnormal to you and that um, is something that allows people to give it more grace in conversation and in, in, and in breaking that down. Um, but I'm very squarely, firmly, I don't give a fuck what we're just scared of, um, uh, and, and what different things, because I recognize that inherently everything that I am and everything that I'm going to save, just my space in the room, me speaking, the kinds of people that I'm speaking to and the world that I'm trying to get them to change and what status quo they are trying to maintain, don't want to hear from me, period. Hearing from me at all in and of itself is the radical thing, is the thing that scares them. So there's no world in which I can mute or condense this in a way that does not make whomever afraid. I recognize, and I think this is something we all should recognize in fighting for anything, is there will always be people that, that it doesn't, there's no way that you can do it, that they will not position themselves as your adversary, as they will not have a problem, as they will not receive it as terror. But you just have to do your best to speak in truth of that and speak in furtherance of that. And also, I think we have to be wary of the limited space we have. Like for me, I'm all for everybody take the approach that works for them. Like in the sense that even like with, with lawyers, like we have different style. Like I could be a great lawyer and I'm a more bombastic type. And there's a great lawyer that is far muter and reserved because different strokes for different folks because there's different people on a jury, right? So in the same way, there are different people that are gonna consume their information and prefer it in different ways. There are people that are gonna prefer to hear from last, people prefer to hear from David, people prefer to hear Mike. And so I don't, I recognize that not every approach is, there's not one approach that's the right way, right? The approach that works for whom and who can whom can package it that way but what i always and i want us to all recognize and something that i know from being in like the writing world in the media world and the lawyer world is they don't let us in much like in terms of writing op -ed, based on how much shit i write you how much things that come out or can be published in mainstream you know print versus what i actually you know write or have or what i want to say is vastly different if i wrote for every op-ed that i've ever had come out if i showed you with the original version of it very, 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 very different. When they let us into um, media to come onto mainstream media to talk to be on these shows, very limited time. So what I don't want us to do is get caught up in the talking about people and things more than issues. And I think that mm -hmm. is sometimes what the audience is what feeds us. They they feed us and they want us to do that. They want us to be worried about what such and such is doing and such and such is saying and arguing and they want you commentating on that person and that thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. We barely get space. They barely offer us any 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 of this space, any of this platform. We need to be spent doing that in furtherance of whatever our goal is and whatever method it is that we are choosing to go about that and educate people rather than get caught up in the bullshit of people turning us into turning us into little pawns. You know what I mean? Little mm -hmm. little things to dance <laughs> with. <laughs> I'm also gonna that's, say that's, that's, that's part of being an, uh, an internet personality too. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Um, I was going to say one of the things that I found really interesting was when I announced in like the community tab of my YouTube channel um, saying that we were going to kind of do this whole thing. Most of the comments, I'd say like 95 percent of them were super positive and everyone's like really excited. They're like, oh, my God, finally, a whole bunch of people on the left are going to, you know, come together in a panel to discuss topics. And it's emerging of minds and, and emerging of platforms. And it was really cool. And then there was like this weird five percent of people maybe that were just like. 
um, well, you're not left enough. Like none of you are left enough. You guys are all liberal cucks. You guys are establishment <laughs> motherfuckers and shit. And I was like, you do nothing to benefit the conversation because while the right can unite itself all it wants all day and spew absolute hatred everywhere in waves, we just sit here and have to pick up pieces because none of us want to get together because everyone's too big trying to figure out whose dick is larger. <laughs> I'm exactly. like, can we just get together and do the damn thing and be united for once. Yeah, yeah I genuinely expected. That's what I, what you got is your 95%. That's what I expected to get, honestly, because to me, as someone who's always, I feel like I'm very rarely in a space where it's not shitty. Like, I'm, I'm in conservative <laughs> shows, I'm in this, I'm like, people, like, they love to see me in those spaces, but they have no respect for my mental health. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, do you think I want to wake up at eight in, so true, you know what though. it is to roll out of bed at the top of the morning and do a morning show with conservatives mm. and everybody I'm like y'all ain't really thinking about my people like to all week be like all day long policing this and that at a whole conservative run and to me when I like when I did Lance's show I'm like oh this is nice you know what I mean <laughs> like, oh and then when we did the, like last year I'm like this is fun like wouldn't it be nice we do so much like grueling type of you know serious this everything's so serious everything's so hostile everything's so um combative wouldn't this be good and also i felt like it was really consistent with what i've espoused because i feel like there isn't enough joint you know what i mean mm -hmm. collaboration on, on this on this side there really there really just isn't and i'm like it's better for us if we're, we're constantly talking about how fragmented our side is. and it is it's because it's a large umbrella of a bunch of different you know movements and yada 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 wouldn't it be good don't we want a space where we're for once not like fighting and doing bullshit like I'm like oh, and, and I thought it was interesting because all the people that have so much shit to say never actually have anything to say about the actual show like there's mm -hmm. that like it's purely just they're not leftists why do you name it this also can we talk about I just want to save and um absolve y'all that I threw a sad leftist mop I, I thought that would be I thought it was fun I'm like, and now people acting like, I'm like, this was never even a term. Why are you acting like leftist mafia is like some sacred, some sacred thing out there that be like, we call them like, bro, it's just, we just having fun. It's just fun. <laughs> Wait, are they, are they mad? Do they think it's like anti-Italian discrimination or what? I got the, someone who's, who said that. No. Really, yeah. I saw a comment that, that said that. I, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to that person. I rolled my eyes. I have Italian cousins. <laughs> I know people that are Italian. My husband is Italian. I, I, I have Italian he approves. Friends, okay. <laughs> we can I just. Get <laughs> but like, I, I, people can talk. I, I'm, I'm half Italian. <laughs> I'm half Portuguese. People can talk shit about Portuguese. Like, I don't fucking like call me a pork chop. I don't give a fuck. Like, it, it's just I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I, I've, I've never weird, heard that. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's cute though. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. My husband is half Italian, so he approves. It's oh, fine. You get a pass. That's a he full gave pass. me permission. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. You get the, you and, get the and Bender pass. is You're Italian, so there. Oh right, we have an Italian on the show. He gave. He gave. Gave us all the Fredo card. We're good. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're no, fine. they talk. They, 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 they had a, they had a lot of negatives to say. But nobody who actually watched the show can say like my friend was like, oh, like my my associate was watching it because I was like, oh, go, make us. She wanted to watch it to get our personalities to do the little fly we posted. She's and she so texts me. She goes. She's so sweet. Oh, she's such a gem. She's, I'm going to mm -hmm. buy a little Christmas gift. I'm going to treat her. She, oh, she manages to fuck out my life. I love her. Um, <laughs> so she, she texted me. She goes, oh, my God, this is actually so good. Like, this is so, like, refreshing. I'm like, isn't it? Isn't it nice and, <laughs> and like, a nice little wholesome time? <laughs> yeah, people like, love it. I've seen so yeah. many comments of people like, oh, this is already my favorite show after episode two. So people yeah, like, because nobody's really doing damn. this. We're kind of doing something new for the left, which is just talking with other people. It's, it's right. amazing. Like, like let's have That's the regular conversations we have. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And it's great because it's we all get to meet new people. We all have different audiences. And like we were saying earlier, we all have different perspectives on how we view the world and different issues that we you know, look into in particular. So when we come together to talk about these big things and then obviously having our audience contribute to kind of those questions and themes for us, it gives a lot of different perspectives for a lot of different people instantaneously, but I think all from still like a central leftist position. And it's nice. Mm -hmm. because yeah. We talk about all these nice. other panels and all these talk shows where all these crazy right wing Nazi people go on. And like, well, I don't want to say we don't have an equivalent because we don't really have Nazis, but like we don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't have yeah. a place where all, no, we don't have a place where... <laughs> <laughs> where we all want to talk and, and express our ideas and viewpoints. Cause I know we're not sitting here all like little cookie cutters. We all have varying degrees on viewpoints. And I think that's really interesting because yeah. it's not going to change 
you know, or grow if you sit in your little bubble and just regurgitate information back and forth. So, and there is nuance within, you know, each side of the political party, but obviously we're speaking left here. There's nuance here in different variations of how people feel about things. And it's interesting to learn about that because that's the only way you're going to grow and expand your own knowledge and what you want to believe in and stand behind. So right. I just and it, exactly. why it took so long, but and it's, and it's representative of life. I think people have to remember that is like if you're actually in community, like as people who consider themselves, you know, they're talking the advocates, the true left, the organizers. I know you know. Let's keep it G real. Like let's not act like everybody that we have to be in community with, that we have to be in these nonprofits with, everybody that we're working with towards maybe the same common goal. We we think that we have identical politics, or we think that their politics are all that I love. You know what I mean? There is va- that whether you like it or not, there is variation. It just exists. It just exists, and you have to be able to contend with that and have those conversations. And and what I want us to remember, the internet, and I I know this because the internet does this to me too. I realize so much Twitter has Twitter has made me be so um so quick fire like so mm-hmm. immediate to be like who i feel like you know because you just feel like people are coming at you and i, and I noticed that like there are things on on twitter or that you get mad about like you're mad because you disagree with but that in real life if your friend or somebody you were talking to like y'all disagree you wouldn't give a fuck like y'all would move past that in the conversation like it wouldn't be that important but we we are doing that we are constantly just it's ah you know what i mean let's quick let's fight this all of this but in in real life we ha- we have these conversations we know that in real life we have all kind of people that we cannot click block on and click mute on in in real life that we got to work with that we got to protest with that we got to do all these things with so why not sit around and have those conversations with each other and show how it really goes where you can have all kind of different viewpoints and nobody's mad there's no beef there's no stress it's just mm-hmm. oh yeah we could sit down and talk in a spider-man shirt which i want to in case mb i want i wanted to call myself out because i know i talked a lot of shit about spider-man on the first episode um <laughs> and i do have this spider-man shirt on but <laughs> I've got to ask, since we're all talking about different platforms, Olayami, when are you going to start a YouTube channel? Because that shit would pop off. Yeah. I was going to say I, that, yeah, too. I could ask yes, that you definitely Olayami need to. Olayami, relax to Ben yeah. Shapiro. Listen, I'm working yeah. on it. <laughs> like, okay, I, okay. I am, I, I am starting to... I, listen, my, my associate who is managing my life, um, we, we are on talk... Uh, on, we're talking about it. I'm trying to get my life together. I'm trying to work up uh, to it. But it's coming. Okay, it's okay. Coming. I'm, I'm going to get it together. You, yeah, you already have a it. fan base like built in. Like a lot of people love you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. listen, and I love them too. You know, I'm a Leo. I loves me. But, oh, I meant to <laughs> ask this for research purposes. Because I was like, my, my friend was talking about how me and Lance are so high energy. And I was like, I think it's we're both Leos. I was like, maybe. Oh, and Mike. And I was like, wait, I think Mike might be a fire sign too, aren't you, Mike? I'm a Wait, cancer. What's your, what's your I think. No, you're. No. Are you a cancer? Yeah. Is that what you are? Yeah. What does that mean? Because I'm not in this world. <laughs> yeah, what so that, what, what does that mean? I don't. I don't know. It, it means you're sensitive and wild and emotionally wild, Mike. That's oh, that's what it means. no. I'm not at all. <laughs> I don't, I don't no confirmation bias possible. Mike. It's possible. This isn't a perfect sign. But I am. I am heavily medicated, so there's no I high wanna, highs I'm or just, low I lows. Ask my <laughs> I, I want to ask your ex boyfriends, line them up, and ask, you know that used to be. Can we talk about that? Used to be my worst life nightmare, like. I used to have in my early 20s, my greatest nightmare was that I would just walk out onto like the Ellen, this is a dream, uh, the Ellen stage and like every man I've slept with would be on the stage. <laughs> like, and, I'd, and then and then how I dismissed Like an ambush? Fears. Yeah. And then how I played down this anxiety was like, I was a like, girl, what the fuck would you be doing on anybody's stage or anybody's talk show getting an interview? <laughs> kind of is my life. And I'm like, oh. but I, I've gotten around the fair and I've just decided I would gaslight everybody. Like, that's what, that is what is going to be my strategy. <laughs> I, I, I decided that can't nobody stop me. I'm gaslighting the fuck out of any. <laughs> like, if they do, I don't know these men. And that's crazy how men be out here lying and cloud chasing and trying to bring a good woman down. I don't know these men. I have never had sexual relations <laughs> with these young men. <laughs> Y'all know my great secrets, my great fears. <laughs> do you do you watch the show Atlanta at all? I watched the first season. Like there's the first... there's an episode about that where they go back to town and every one of their exes is just there all at once and they have to deal with all of them at the same time. I used to have, you know, what I used to ask a scenario when we go to the the bar one time. Me and my friend was having this this debate at karaoke. Um, like if you were, if, if you think, if you walked into a room, you were locked in a room with all your exes, how do you think that would go for you? 
What do you think? I would happened? do fine, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's going to be a great time. Really? <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, oh, I'm. Get in the room together with one another. You know that, right? Like, they're all in the room with you. Like one little one little white padded room. Not because you're like locked away in an asylum, but it's white and it's padded for comfort. So y'all get good <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I mean, I didn't really I didn't date a lot before I came out, but like my most like the one girlfriend who was like stood out the most who like met my parents came to my wedding with my husband and stuff, so we're like really cool. That's and cute. yeah, I think I would do okay. I feel like I haven't made a lot of enemies except online. Online is very different. What about you, Blair? I'm on friendly terms with like all of my exes except one, and I actually still regularly message a lot of them, and we like check in on Very each cool. other and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, what about you, lads? Uh, no, no, I would not like. It would not go well. I would not like. Oh, <laughs> be a room of chaos and dark no, energy. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> I do not want to. No, thanks. Thank you. Like, I'm alone in this. I just would the block would be on nobody but me. All right, cool, cool. All right, got it. Like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not the best. So, because you said something about the the um the horoscope signs. So, like, yeah. since myself, Blair, and David had different answers, does that correlate? Like, I don't know what there's because I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not in this I'm world, a, so I'm just I'm just curious. I'm, I'm a fire. Let me, let me write this down, and I'm actually going to come back with answers next. Yes, because so I do think this is interesting. Again. Yes, because for recent purposes, I, I do want to know this. And again, everybody's birthdays because I know that Mike is not qualified to give me the right zodiac. I know. I, I, need <laughs> I, I know this. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. I, I feel like I'm I'm 60 sure I'm a cancer, but I could be completely wrong. <laughs> give me give me your birthday. July 18th. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are a cancer. I am. Okay. Okay. Well, th- yes. I'm actually. I used to have a... Glad. Okay. Yeah. I used to have. A... I used to be friends with a girl whose birthday that was. She was wild. Oh, okay. It's the same birthday <laughs> as Nelson Mandela, so I feel blessed. There you go. Yeah. Okay, Lance. <laughs> oh, what, oh no, what, I know uh, you're Leo. I already know that, David. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a Leo. Uh, I'm Scorpio. Oh, November. Blair. I'm. De- I'm. I'm definitely Scorpio. Blair. Knowing I'm what I know. Curious. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'll come back with research. I'll go. I'll go look up Matt's business. He's he's famous now, so I'm sure it'll be on the internet for me momentarily. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> um, yeah, I'm curious yeah. if there's like any like through line there in terms of like with the similarities and stuff. Because I feel like yes. for the people who hate me online in real life, talk to anyone who knows me. I have like really no enemies. Like even coworkers. Like I'm cool with all of them. Like I feel like I just kind of get along with everyone. Which is weird because I'm very opinionated online and whatnot. But like I'm I'm believe it or not, folks, okay, haters, I'm a chill person. <laughs> I'm a polarizing character. Um I'm gonna be I'm a, I'm gonna be honest. Like I'm I'm one of those people that like you feel saliently about. Like you either really fuck with me or you cannot stand my black mm. ass. And there's no in between. It has always been like that. Like a lot of people, like most of people will really love me, but the couple of people who don't fuck with me. Boy, don't they fuck with me. <laughs> I remember I, I had a sorority sister in college tweet out when I was like winning a bunch of awards and everybody was, you know, gassing me. Oh. She was like, she tweeted out, the bitch tweeted out. That's why she don't like me. She tweeted. <laughs> she said, oh my God, I almost rolled my eyes so hard I went fucking blind. <laughs> like, she was like, I was like, God damn, I'm talking about you don't fucking like me. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's a whole up. lot of people can't stand my black ass. They just, they, but you know what's funny? You would think about in a world, I feel like, before you get like visibility or whatever, a lot of people know you. Um, you think that like people who don't like you are gonna be like this big problem and people wanna talk stories. But people are such social cl- social climbers and clout chasers and wanting to be adjacent to anybody they perceive as visible. People who do not fucking like you. They know they hate your guts. They've hated you their entire life. Perpetrate like they like you now. They'll be like, oh, Wait, that's that's how that's how I know her all the time, no. all the time. By people, by people like you're famous now. I saw you on the hill and stuff. Or, yes, or wait, mm. all the time. Oh, wow, that's crazy. No, I haven't. I haven't had that yet. No. Oh, I have that all the time. Like the minute, yeah, like John. <laughs> like after John, John. I swear to you, when John Oliver happened, I found out before I saw it or knew I was on it because people were messaging me. People I went to, I went to school and I lived in Florida for one year. I, I I almost have like nobody from there that I speak to. 
people who never talk to me, not just like, oh, they haven't talked to me in a long time. They didn't talk to me then. I've never, they've been on my social media for 15 years. There's no interaction between us. They message like, hey, I just saw you and John Oliver. Did you know I live in New York City? You want to go to coffee? I swear <laughs> to God. Like, I swear to you, people who don't fucking like me, a girl who could not stand me messaged me. And she was like, she was like, oh, would you, would you like, I saw you, I saw you in the breakfast club. I see you doing a lot of big things. Would you like to go to dinner? Bitch, what? Somebody from my law school who don't like me invited me to a standing card game. Standing! That may, we graduated years ago. It's been years they do the fucking card game. They don't invite me. Wait, what, now, what, do you want to go? Stand, as in you literally stand and play cards together? Like, look at you, Lance. No, as in, like, they do the card game regularly. <laughs> like, oh, it's a standing, okay. a standing obligation. It's, it's a new term to me, okay? I don't play a lot of cards. <laughs> I was thinking, like, Lance, to be, to be honest. That's, I was like, stand really and hard. play cards? Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, Ole. I had literally one of my high school bullies. Like, this dude was mean to me. He would pants me in the hallways in school. I got eggs thrown at me and shit. Oh and God. when the channel, I think this was maybe, it had to have been, I think, last year, yeah, 2021. And I get a DM on Instagram saying, oh, you're doing so great and blah, 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 blah. How's life been for you? And I was like, and block. That's how they be. There you That's go. how they be. Go away. That's how they be. You made that my life dead. hell. <laughs> That's how they give it up. It's very, very shameless. I went on a first date with a guy. He was the most miserable curmudgeon. Can we talk about I love that yo, word. That's the awesome. amount of, I, it, <laughs> listen, at least, at least five men who ghosted me like six years ago, bro? They all like the six woodwork. years ago. And messaged me like, oh, I see you. I want to go to jump. Like, oh, not. You can, the last message in the chat is six years ago where they fucking. I'm like, you not ashamed? Like, a man <laughs> we do not. Yo, I wish you. I remember was the most miserable. Fuck, this man was the most miserable Ebenezer Scrooge ass man I ever. Like, it was like Christmas, bro. And he was like gangbang on Christmas. He ate Christmas. He's like, ow, fuck Christmas. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Like, he's, like, he's at the place talking big shit. That man was mean to me the whole day. He fucking deleted me on social media after that. Never talked to me anything. Sees me in fucking D.L. Hughley's page and asks me, like, ooh, Mr. Lauren doing big things. I'm like, You're going to get that Season song stuck in my head now. God damn it. It was stuck in my oh, head my last month right for some now. reason. Listen, all the time I'm in my house. 281-330-8001. I was going to say, do you have the number memorized? <laughs> Did you try to call the number when he first popped off? Now you now you know this. I did. <laughs> you you know this. I was I used to try to call every number that they had and the stuff. You can at one point I was convinced I was so obsessed with the Lost City of Atlantis. Like I just knew I could follow the instructions Ariel talking about to find it. I'm like, this is the Bahamas. We have Atlantis. It's definitely here. I got this. I'm a fine founder in them. Like, and I was on a quest, my guy. I used to do so much bullshit. One time I convinced all the neighborhood children to like build a fort. Like my like like let's let's be like my big I think it's my big sister actually my big sister used to do this thing where she convinced everybody she was a witch and she that you needed to do she convinced all the neighborhood children that if she did they did a hundred good deeds that they would become a witch too and so she had turned the entire neighborhood into little child slaves everybody and she would never let you get to 100 deeds she would reset you all the time and what she would do at night to convince everybody there was like a secret door in our closet in my room that we didn't know about me and my sisters and so she would go through that at night and we would think she went to the other witch world and she'd come back that bitch would sleep in the fucking secret back in the closet that's how fucking committed she was to this come out in the morning talking to you about how she was off with her husband gohan and blah 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 and this is the next thing and so you're like yeah 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 now everybody now she's got a, an army of child slaves digging a giant fucking hole in my daddy's backyard oh uh, my god that's my youth that's oh my, my that's that's my <laughs> sounds fun though i don't know <laughs> just, i she's love so, the commitment to, day, to the she's bit tickled. she will just like randomly call us she'll be at work like laughing about it to her co-workers and call us and be like yummy 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 tell them tell them i used to have y'all working for me and i'm like oh 
Yes, yes, that is true. She she did pull that off. That was that was a thing she did to us for years on end. For years, she got it off for years. And then when my sister Doon tried to lead a coup, my sister Doon was like, "No!" Like the children drops and shovel. Like it's not real. She's not a fucking witch. I'm telling y'all, she's a bitch. Y'all have bamboozled <laughs> my, my bitches to beat her up. <laughs> like okay, like now now you have to be disciplined. We have to make an example of you. You are just trying to lead a fucking coup. So. <laughs> <laughs> my big sister did not fuck around and she was fast too if you try to run she listen she was she was like terrifyingly fast like so what? fast i remember one time we used to call her she goes by Ab- we call her bim but she goes by abby out in the world so this is back when facebook had a facebook graffiti wall you remember you used to be able to draw on the facebook oh graffiti my god wall? yes so me and my sister are in the room and we draw on her Facebook graffiti. She had fallen off the chair earlier that day. <sighs> it was so funny. So I draw a picture of her falling off the chair and it says, not I be a beast. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> she gets so fucking upset, yo. Know, we like run out the house and we think like we go running. She's like chasing us around, so we go running down the neighborhood and we're like all the way around the roundabout. We're like we don't, we're good. So we start walking. You don't understand. She sounded like a, all you hear is poof, 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 poof. <laughs> and when I like we turn around. I'm like, ah, you can't be fast enough. She fucking crashed. Like, she fucking cla- like when I say she clashed us together, like this just drag us back to this fucking house. Listen, my big sister did not fuck around. She was a terrorist. <laughs> like, I want like you kind of need to bring her on the show because I kind of want to meet her now. <laughs> I, I will if y'all want me. I'll bring them. She loved that. <laughs> I'll bring her. That's she crazy. was definitely. She was a mess. That's awesome. Um, this is a complete and super sidebar. Does anyone know, because Elon Musk just tweeted as of 22 seconds ago, and he's trying to justify the banning of Binder and everyone by saying they posted my exact address and location. Like, quote, they posted my exact real-time location, basically assassination coordinates, in obvious direct violation of the Twitter terms of service. That, that He just posted this as, as of like 30 seconds ago. That's that's nonsense, right? Like, that, yeah, like that's Matt a complete did, fucking lie. Yeah, that, Matt didn't even share the link. Lie. Yeah. I mean, the dude, he's he's banned Mastodon. Like, so obviously this isn't about that. Like, yeah, <laughs> you, you can't link your Mastodon account on Twitter. It doesn't let you like this is. You can no, link your gab. Crazy. That's really probably you. Crazy. You can. What's gab? It's another like right wing like, uh, Twitter ish. They're all the same. Yeah. Basically, Filled yeah. All writers, Nazis. White supremacists, white nationalists, Christian fascists, Christian nationalists, neo reactionaries, all of the fun people. Yeah. Losers. Yeah. Stochastic right. terrorists, libs of TikTok tweeted out It's funny seeing the libs panic over their friends getting suspended. They're finally getting a taste of what conservatives have lived through for years. You're literally so a says, says stochastic a terrorist. Running, says a bitch running a massive hate fucking page on yeah. every yeah. fucking platform yeah. unchecked. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why, why don't you post another hospital address and then like, oh, shit, they got a bomb threat. Oh, all the doctors got bomb threats. Oh, fucking all the teachers are now getting death threats. What's happening? <laughs> oops, well, oopsie. Tee-hee. Yeah, do it, do, like do it again. Like random teachers, like yeah. private citizens. Like, mm-hmm. fucking disgusting. God. There's no comparison. Like, if there's any complaints about, you know, people on the right getting banned, it's all, almost always because they actually did some serious shit. Yeah, that yeah. actually really breaks the actual mm-hmm. rules, <laughs> not yeah. like right. random. Like, oh, you're banned, you're banned because we can't tell you why you're banned. You're just banned now permanently. Like, it's so fucking ridiculous. That yeah. is crazy. Like, that's really fucked up. Honestly, I wonder what like what legal remedy they have, if any. Like, that's not my area of law, but I feel like looking into that because there ain't no fucking way. Like, people build. Like, obviously, Twitter plays into tremendously people's careers people's profit people's this people build this and these arbitrary levels of these were not the fucking terms of the term the terms of service haven't been violated and you are actually affecting people's revenue stream xyz i feel like they probably have something they could get real litigious about and if it were me and these (laughs) we gotta gotta sue baby i'm upset (laughs) (laughs) all right well let me uh let me get some questions because we still have a lot of questions and i know we've We've gone off the rails tonight, which is good. Um, NordCal, sorry, sorry did someone have to be somewhere too? I just want to make sure oh, that uh, yeah. I'm, I am probably going to jump off in like ten minutes or so because I got to finish okay. shoveling snow. All right, let me <laughs> oh yeah, you were, you were the seven thirty one. Easy stuff. That yeah. was that was me. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah, Ole, I was going to say change. leave too. <laughs> you can cancel <laughs> yeah. your plans. Too far left this mafia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So we got asked, uh, is Vosh not in good standing with the leftist mafia? Uh, I'm I'm cool with Vosh. He, he was on the last thing. Or, or sorry, he was on the the, the election. Oh, right, yeah, he didn't, he didn't say up. much because he was so fucking shit faced. The guy was like slurring half of his speech, but he was on our election panel. Yeah, I love Vosh. He was there. I don't, oh. know, what, I don't know who that is. Um, what's his? He was he was on. The, he, you were you did a stream with him. He was just so shit faced, and he couldn't. I didn't. Him. No, I, I think, think she ducked out though. before no, no, he no, came no, on. He, he came on later. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was. He was sloshed. I was, I, yeah, that's, that's wild. <laughs> so yeah, I'd, I'd say he's in good standing. He's just doing his own thing. So. Maybe we'll do guests in the future, though. We've kind of talked about it for those who are wondering. Okay. But, um, you know, I, I think for the think first few it. episodes, it's probably important that we kind of establish our own little thing first and then yeah. bring on other people. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, let's see here. Uh, the constructive criticism says this isn't really a question, but I want to say I love your content. Keep up the great work. Wow. And that's not really constructive criticism. Thank you so much. I think that was their name. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this person, uh, Nate, says, not a question, but a suggestion. I think you guys should make a list of the craziest events that happened this year and talk about it on the next episode. Mm, okay. Okay, that's yeah. A wrap up wow. of 2022. I How actually, I can, I, I already edited and, uh, pre-published a video to my YouTube channel titled 2022 in 10 minutes, all the biggest stories in lefty media. So maybe um, I can share that link ahead of time with people. It's scheduled to go live on the 29th of this month. So it's available for patrons now, but yeah, I can maybe share that ahead of time. Um, yeah. No, I think that's all. This one is a, I guess a comment slash compliment for Ole. Just want to say, uh, this comes from Shay. Uh, they say, I just want to say hi. You are my favorite to follow on Twitter before I left. So happy to see you on Rising and Breakfast Club. Great to see you on Twitch. Oh, I love oh. that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to run through some some quick ones here. Um, oh, let's see this. Uh, Callas Cats, parentheses surfs, a.k.a. Giga Stacy, parentheses bird app. For some people. I don't know. <laughs> um, I will, <laughs> lots, lots of indicators. So I'm, I'm assuming someone knows. Um, they say, if I build an effigy of Elon and burn it for my pagan winter solstice Yule celebration, film it, upload it to Twitter, get banned, Elon. and sue Elon for violating my freedom of religious expression, <laughs> will everyone on the panel and in their chats go to Burning Man with me if I pay with Elon's money? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I was like, he does not want to be there. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just like, I don't no. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Why maybe. Have, someone in the chat on last episode when I was telling y'all about TJ Holmes and his affair, someone said we should have tea time with Olay as a segment, and I definitely want that. Oh, okay, I okay. Like, I was like, that's a great idea. I want, I would love to. Have it then. I would like to talk shit about random pop culture things. I do I like segment that. ideas. Also, we didn't um do we have to do lances consistently? We've done it every episode. We have to cancel and uncancel yep. somebody. Oh, oh right. right. Uncancel. Uh we uncanceled you, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and maybe yeah. we should cancel Matt Binder so it brings more attention to him. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, Matt Binder is officially dude. canceled. <laughs> yeah, dude, do uh, a cancellation of love. Matt Binder's canceled. <laughs> And are we uncanceling Elon then? Conversely, no. since we're canceling that <laughs> vendor? No. No, Elon that motherfucker is, stays canceled. He's not, he's not yeah, canceled. Forever. He's fucking deleted. Yep. Yeah. Just like Matt Bender's Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. Hashtag free Bender. Hashtag free Bender. Yes, everyone, go tweet hashtag free Bender. I know you're watching on yep. multiple streams. Let's get that trending. Hashtag, hashtag free yeah. Bender. Bender. I'll do it right now. Yeah, hey, and right, hashtag right the leftist mafia. That yeah, way you know where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah. And join his patron. patron. Yes. Matt, exactly. Patreon.com slash Matt Bender. Help yes. the man and out. I'm going to link that too. Missinfo.substack.com. Oh, yeah, everyone. Shout outs. Do your thing. Your people. We do things. Mike. I am Mike Figueredo, host of The Humanist Report. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter for now. Next week, I'll check back in. <laughs> And um, yeah, new videos Monday through Friday on my show, Twitch highlights on the weekends. Yeah, go subscribe to me, folks. 
David. Hey, <laughs> I am David Dole. I host uh, The Rational National on YouTube. I am sometimes on Twitch as well, playing games on there and just talking shit. So uh, follow me on uh, there as well under the same uh, title, The Rational National. Also on Twitter for now, at David Dole, D-O-E-L. You see the name right there in the corner. There you go. Lance. Uh, you can find me everywhere. Social media is sold at uh, at the Surf's TV at the Surf's TV. Super easy. Yeah, you can find me on all social media: Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Miss O'Learn. That's M S O L U R I N. And subscribe to my Substack O'Learnati, where I drop essays. And yeah, and y'all should let me know if I should start like a um like a like a call in. I feel like that would be fun or a Twitch or something. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know if I should do that. I feel like that'd be cool. Twitch would be and awesome. And Blair, right? Yeah, I yeah, feel like yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. I agree. Mm-hmm. Make my Instagram stories less long. <laughs> Um, all right, hey, hey everyone, I'm Blair, the Illuminati, uh, which by the way, I've seen some of the chats, y'all are spelling it B-L-A-I-R-E, I am not Blair White. <laughs> How dare they? Ooh, that's, a, that's a mean mix-up. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is. Someone once commented on my YouTube channel, was like, oh, Blair White, what kind of pivot do you think this is? You think you can hide on this channel behind this pyramid figure? And I was like, I don't ah, know who the fuck that is. I don't know who Blair White is. Listen here. <laughs> Other people are allowed to have that name, first of all. So leave me alone. Uh, oh but yeah, God. anyway, uh, Illuminati, everywhere you go. Twitter, I'll probably be fine because I'm not verified, so I get to hide in the shadows there on Twitter. Uh, YouTube, obviously. Instagram, TikTok, whatever. I'm there. Cool. <laughs> All right, this is a good show, guys. A lot of a lot fun. of crazy tonight. Always great to chat with everybody, and uh, we will see y'all next week at. Are we doing five thirty Pacific? Eight thirty. Yeah, our normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah back to the normal Eastern schedule. Yeah, back to the normal oh, schedule. Nice. Today we the were an hour. Early. Everyone gets wild. Yeah. yeah. The night yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be traveling, yeah. so I might be a little bit late, but I also might be tipsy. Forewarning. Yeah, you're Hell sure. yeah. Sure. You're coming hot. <laughs> yeah, coming in hot. <laughs> I might be in the Bahamas, but whatever, I'll be there. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you know, he's home. Fabulous night. It was always great to chat with y'all. It was such a pleasure. And uh, Bye, everybody. next week. Take Bye. care, Bye. folks. Bye. Bye.